that they got from that Bear Bryant show. You got close to the man, and you didn't even know it. I, I, I feel a little nervous I am, because I need to work. He knew exactly what he was doing. You don't think he went down there and stood in the end zone in his checkered hat and leaned on the goalpost because he was comfortable. It was so everybody could see it. I think at some moment, Bear suddenly realized he was going to be more than just a successful coach. He was going to be an icon. And there is a certain tilt of the head, a certain arrogance, a certain exercise of power. You don't make any attempt to neutralize the praise. You just accept it and even glory in it. And I think Bear certainly did. Every towering figure had these mannerisms that are easily caricatured, but are nonetheless intrinsic to the personality. There are certain people who are so fully themselves that they are simply originals. He created a persona that he knew the public would enjoy, accept, and that he could use to further the University of Alabama. The only higher ranking name in the state back then was God. Coming up, football rescues Paul Bryant from a life of hard times and limited opportunity. The Bear, the legend of Coach Paul Bryant, is sponsored by Sprint DCS, the clear alternative to cellular. Knights of Columbus, in service to one, in service to all. And by Selson Blue Shampoo, to help keep your dandruff from sending the wrong signal. Is your dandruff sending the wrong signals? Go! Go! No, no. It's Selsun Power. Doctors recommend Selsun Blue. Man, that is awesome. Get Selsun Power. It's been said, men tend to communicate shoulder to shoulder. If that's the case, these guys are saying, let's change the world. Let's make a difference. Let's act as we are called. The Knights of Columbus. In service to one, in service to all. Last year I was on a cell phone. I said, make sure we have a backup for O'Neill. He heard Captain Antonio. So that's when we got free and clear with Sprint PCS. Real clear calls and nationwide long distance included. So now, wherever we go, what do we have? A backup for O'Neill. The Sprint PCS free and clear plan with nationwide long distance included. Every minute, every day. Hi, I'm Alexis Christophorus, business reporter for CBS Market Watch. I'm part of a worldwide team of journalists who keep you informed. But most importantly, I'm also a CBS Market Watch member. With my membership, I get access to great benefits like timely news alerts, great money saving offers, and powerful portfolio tracking tools. The best part membership is absolutely free. So sign up now to become a member of CBS Market Watch. CBS Market Watch. It's more than just news, it's news and tools you can use. Paul Bryant, despite his reputation, despite this larger-than-life persona, he was defined in many ways by the insecurity of a little boy who didn't want to be made fun of and that lived with him for his entire life. Paul Bear Bryant was born on September 11, 1913, in a rural Arkansas community so obscure, even his sister couldn't tell you how the town of Morrow Bottom got its name. I don't know why they called it Morrow Bottom. We didn't leave it for the bottom of the country. And I don't know where they got the name of Morrow Bottom. made us sound like a bunch of morons. Bryant grew up very poor, very modest, a three-room house that 12 to 13 people shared. It was a very tough upbringing. 
they worked the fields, they had a very hard road to eke out a meager existence. The 11th of 12 children, Bryant and his family made money any way they could. One of the ways my mother fed the family was to take vegetables that we grew in our garden to town and sell it. She went in an old covered wagon and Paul had to drive the team. Every Saturday I can remember I'd drive my mother to Fort Ice. We would pedal produce, go around and ring the bell, and I hated it. Paul and his mother would round the little downtown area about the time the kids were coming out of school. And he knew they were going to make fun of him for being a country boy and for being poor. And he never lost those voices in his head that said, you're not anything in this world. The school where we went was a one-room school, and it just went to junior high. When we got out of junior high, we had to go into town. That's where he started playing football. He was walking by the field one day, and the coach said, you want to play football? And he said, I don't know how to play football. And the coach said, see that guy right down there? And he said, yeah. And he said, uh, I want you to go down there and knock the hell out of him. And he said, OK, I can do that. He said, sis, that's going to get me out of here. I'm going to be a big football player. Fort Ayers was a great football town. It had some great players, a great tradition. They won the state championship. I think that's when Coach Bryant got a taste of it. A legendary coach at Alabama named Hank Crisp came to Fort Ayers to recruit the Jordan twins. And Click Jordan was the great quarterback of the Fort Ayers team at that point. He didn't get Click, but he got Bryant. Bryant wasn't a great player at Alabama, but he was a tough one and a key piece of the Tide's 1935 Rose Bowl team that upset the West Coast power, Stanford. Lama's ball on Stanford's 20 yard line. They see Hall throw the pass, it's completed. A beautiful pass to Bryant. They call him the other end because it was Don Hudson, who of course was a famous All-American and great pass catcher, but Bryant was a big guy. He was a very fierce football player. In 1935, he broke a bone in his leg, and Alabama was going to play Tennessee up in Knoxville. And Hank Crisp is giving his pep talk, and he's saying, well, I don't know about you, but I know one son of a guy who's not going to let us down. That's old number 34. Bryant looked down at his jersey, and there was 34. He ended up not only playing that game, but playing the game of his life. That day proved winning meant everything to him. It defined Bryant. After college, Bryant became an assistant coach at Alabama, remaining there for four seasons. But Bear was soon restless, moved on to Vanderbilt, where he stayed for a year before seeking a head coaching opportunity. He had actually gone for an interview at the University of Arkansas, and of course he was a favorite son coming back to take over the program. Well, it was December 7, 1941. He would have gotten a job, but he enlisted the next day in the Navy. Assigned to the USS Uruguay, Lieutenant Commander Paul Bryant almost met disaster at sea. February the 12th, 1943, it was real foggy and started cool outside, and I'd been in bed about 30 minutes. I heard the whistle blow unusual. Just in a few seconds after that, we got rammed. While many of those who abandoned ship were lost at sea, Bryant disobeyed orders. And survived. A year later, he was back stateside, experiencing success as the head coach of the North Carolina Pre-Flight School, a team which included All-American quarterback Otto Graham. At the end of the war, he was offered the head coaching job in Maryland by Curly Bird, who was the president of the university and had been the coach there. Bryant was an immediate success. They won their first game and finished the season with a record of 6-2-1 the first winning record they'd had in a number of years. And I believe that Coach Bryant would be there the rest of his life. I couldn't imagine him going anywhere else. Up next, Bryant looks to develop his own legend, but finds himself in the shadow of another. It's more important than ever for brokerage firms to show clarity. Prudential is a leader when it comes to using plain English for investment recommendations. Call it back to basics, buy, hold, and sell. The financial advisor takes it one step further, gets to know the investor, and tailors my recommendations 
to the investor's unique needs. We're working for the investor every day. You like simple better than complicated. You like quick better than slow. You like easy better than hard. So now pay with SpeedPass at both Exxon and Mobile. It's fast, it's free, and it links to a check card or major credit card you already have. Call toll free or visit SpeedPass.com. We're drivers too. If you're concerned about hair loss, call Hair Club now and get this booklet or CD-ROM free. It's packed with the latest information on hair loss breakthroughs from around the world, including hair cloning and genetic therapy. It's loaded with the latest updates on all the proven hair loss options available today, including approved drugs, shampoos, and Hair Club's new procedures. So call 1-800-HAIR-CLUB now to get more information. Hair Club, over 25 years of hair loss experience available at your fingertips. At the Home Depot, we're driving down the cost of home improvement with a new program to make low prices even lower. With special buys and new lower prices all over the store and at homedepot.com. Just look for the hammer symbol. It means we've got lower prices nailed. It's a holiday homecoming for Coach Rick Patino. He leads Louisville back to his old school Kentucky for we'll Catch Georgetown Collide with UCLA next on CBS. Although the Bear Bryant era at Maryland was successful, it lasted just one season. Young, confident, and stubborn, Bryant butted heads with school president Curly Bird over a suspended player, packed his bags, and left. Word got around that Coach Bryant was leaving University of Maryland and going to University of Kentucky. And when he did, the students marched up to the president's house to find out why he was leaving. Dr. Bird tried to smooth it over, and it didn't go too well, so the students struck. We're not going to class because they didn't want Coach Bryant to leave. That gave Coach Bryant notoriety all over the United States because it was in every paper, TV, radio. Kentucky football wasn't great, but they decided they were going to go out and get a good young coach and develop their program, and they hired a by the name of Bear Bryant. All the players were excited to meet the new coach because there was a lot of enthusiasm about what he's going to do for the program. He was only one year head coach at Maryland, but he acted like he's been coaching for quite a while. He was so confident. That's what I liked about it. When he walked in, he looked like the Lord. He was tall, handsome. He was just very impressive. Immediately, you took a liking to him, and you were in awe of him, really. But Kentucky already had one coach to be in awe of, a basketball legend with a lengthy and impressive resume. Colonel Adolph Ruff brought one of his greatest Kentucky teams to the National Invitation Tournament in New York. They were the champions of the Southeastern Conference. The basketball team during that time was in its heyday. They won the national championship in 48, 49, and again in 51. So Coach Ruff had established the dominant program not only in the South, but probably one of the two or three top programs in the country. Basketball had been popular in the state, truthfully, ever since my father arrived. It gave the people of the state something to hang their hats on. With Bryant in charge, the football team was starting to make people feel the same way. The Wildcats had a winning record in each of the Bears' first four seasons. Then came 1950. That year, Kentucky went 11-1 and, and finished with a win over top-ranked Oklahoma in the Orange Bowl stopping the Sooners' 31-game winning streak. Coach Bryant ignited the people in the Commonwealth unlike any football coach before or since. Football came to rival basketball in popularity, and I'm not sure Coach Rupp really liked that very much. Coach Rupp did not like to be overshadowed, and the football team was coming up as we beat Oklahoma, the number one team in the nation. It's kind of like Patton and Montgomery during World War II. They were both on top and wanted to stay on top. Probably one of the most interesting situations between two massive egos in terms of the coaching profession that we've ever seen. There was a really good player named Wallace Wawa Jones who was an All-American in both sports. And his senior year is when Bryant went to his first bowl game. Therefore, Wawa had to report 
late for basketball practice, and Coach Rupp didn't like that. He tried to punish him. He held him out of a game that Kentucky lost. He didn't want Bear Bryant having one of his best basketball players. One year after both the football and basketball teams won the conference championship, the tenuous relationship between the Baron and the Bear was further strained. Despite their team's comparable achievement, Rupp's reward was far greater than Bryant's. Although years later, the two found they could joke about their unequal treatment. Remember they gave you that big black Cadillac, big 75, with a chauffeur and about 80 yards long, and they, get, they gave me the cigarette light, and I want you to know I still had it. You, you still got the same? That's the same one they gave you there. That's right. Been many words written about how you and I didn't get along, the feud between us. Well, if you ever didn't like me, I didn't know it. She's always pretty nice to me. All the years we were together here, and I've said that before, that you and I ever had an unkind word mm -hmm. uh, that we ever well, said to each other. Well, thank you, and it's sure nice that you had me on here. Well, thank it's you. Good to, thank you, Paul. Here with you. Thank you. The uneasy truce that existed between the two coaches was shattered in 1953 when Rupp was implicated in a point-shaving scandal that rocked college basketball. The Bears saw blood and pounced. Coach Bryant went to the president of Kentucky and said he felt that this point-shaving scandal was going to hurt his football recruiting. President Donovan said, I'm either going to force Rupp to retire or I'm going to fire him. And at that point, Coach Bryant uh, felt that finally he was going to be number one. So he came back from a recruiting trip and he picked up the paper and read that Kentucky had renewed Coach Rupp's contract. And that's just when he said, I'm out of here. Coming up, the bear takes his act to the heartland and pushes his players to the edge. Paul Romine's top fuel car is capable of pumping 80 gallons of nitro every minute, feeding a 6,000 horsepower engine that gets completely rebuilt every quarter mile, reaching 320 miles per hour in under five seconds. You'd think he'd want to hold on with both hands. On and off the track, driving is serious business. That's why Paul Romine relies on expert automotive technicians and top quality CarQuest auto parts. CarQuest, the professional choice. Golden Globe nominee Simon Baker stars in The Guardian, CBS Tuesday. It's the biggest event of the year. Mazer's after Christmas sale at our furniture and appliance store on Green Springs Highway Homewood. Not only get the best prices of the year, but you can buy with 12 months no interest through December 30th. Be sure to see the big ad in the newspaper Christmas Day for Alabama's largest selection of brand name furniture and a huge selection of GE appliances at wholesale cost or less. That's only at Mazer where you always buy for less. And your satisfaction is guaranteed. <laughs> Everyone has problems like these. But where do you turn for trustworthy professional help? Wouldn't it be nice if there was just one number to call? There is. Call the Ask the Pros hotline at 252-0708 and stop wasting your time. Get dependable, honest answers from certified professionals when you ask the pros. Call 252-0708 or go to WIAT.com to be instantly connected with Ask the Pros. Ask the Pros, 252-0708. Paul Feinbaum, only on 42 Daily News. It's about time. We now return to the bear, the legend of Coach Paul Bryant. At the end of World War II, Texas A&M was the only college in the country that was losing attendance. It was all military, no female. We marched to chow. We marched breakfast, noon, and dinner and we all wore uniforms. When you graduated, they pinned bars on you and you saluted and you went into the service. They called it Sing Sing on the Brazos. The buildings looked like the color of grocery sacks. It was brown or green and the, and the green wasn't on the grass, the green was on the uniforms. There was absolutely positively no fun. The best view of Texas A&M was the rearview mirror of your car. That's one of the big reasons they had trouble getting football players to Texas A&M. February 8, 1954, was the date that Bear Bryant took the job at Texas A&M. When he got there, there were 6,000 cadets ready to see him speak. And he gets up on the stage, 
and he watches the cheerleaders and they cavort and they dance around. Well, he wanted to do something like them. So he started dancing and he took off his jacket and he threw it on the ground. Rolled up his sleeves like the yellow leaders and he took charge. Then he started stomping on his tie and on his coat and by now the place is going crazy. It was, I'm here, we're gonna win. We're gonna turn this thing around. And he had everybody there convinced that's what we do. Bryant, however, had inherited an awful program with few good players and even fewer resources. He needed help, and some wealthy Texas oilmen were eager to pitch in. He wanted to find out exactly what their commitment was, and he picked up this big, old, ugly spittoon, and he put it in the table, and he said, gentlemen, show me your commitment. And here came the rolls of 5,000 and 10,000. Bear Bryant had a bankroll to start recruiting at Texas A&M. There was an old player that they really wanted who lived out in the country, and they didn't know exactly how to get the $10,000 to him. So they stuffed it in a bale of hay, stuck it in an airplane, and dropped it over the top of his farm. Of course, it split in half when it hit the ground, and needless to say, he signed the next day with Texas A&M. But no one who signed with A&M could have been prepared for the physical and psychological abuse they would experience in spring practice. Coach Bryan told us to go get a toothbrush and a change of clothes or two and return back to the buses in about 15 minutes or so that we were heading out of town to a undisclosed location to do our training. And people were just wondering where in the heck we were going. The first 150 miles were pretty green because the College Station portion of Texas had been receiving rain. But once they got on past Austin, they started to see the scarred land, and it really looked like a moonscape. And we kept asking the bus drivers where we were going. They wouldn't tell us. And we finally came to a place called Junction, Texas. I was from West Texas. I knew where Junction was, and it was on a nice little river and a cute little park and campus out there. It sounded like a good time and some fun. We thought it was going to be a picnic. The Lano River was there, and we all went swimming. We had a little barbecue, and we thought this was going to be OK. But once they began, the players knew they weren't practicing in paradise. The drought had taken a toll. There was no grass. I mean, everything just stark brown, dusty, rocks, stickers. You'd go down to a three-point stamp, and a lot of times you'd put your fingers into one of those old goat heads that they have out there in West Texas. We lived in Quonson huts, just sort of an army barracks looking thing that weren't very tall, and there were bunk beds. The older guys had the bottom bunk, and my bunk was just about this far from the top, and it was a tin roof, and if you've been in that part of the country in the summertime, I mean, it was hot. First morning of practice, we gave them all a Unicap M vitamin, four salt tablets, and a glass of orange juice before practice. And it surely won't take a Phi Beta Kappa to figure out what happened to those pills and that orange juice at 9 o'clock in the morning when it's so hot you couldn't breathe. I mean, it was blood and guts all the way. The boys were horribly abused in the form of excessive physical activity under extremely trying circumstances without any water. We didn't get any water at all. I was at that time about 225 pounds, and I'd come off the field weighing less than 200. I'd be cramping up so bad, time was over, it was hard to get off the practice field. After a while, you had enough, and you're almost ready to challenge the coach. Players start quitting, uh, start leaving. They didn't want to go through that. If you'd see two players going to the water fountain together, you knew that they were getting up a little courage. Getting their plans together about how they were going to get out of there. We had a kind of a bet going as to be there the next morning, because you never know. Well, that was our entertainment. We'd look out there for someone escaping, <laughs> leaving a building and breaking for the gate. It's kind of like military maneuvers where you have to crawl out till you get out of sight before you can start running. They'd come back and they'd sort of wave at everybody and the manager would take them down to the bus station. They actually went out there with 48 players and they came back with 29. Stallings had the great line, they went out in two buses, came back in one, which was absolutely true. You gotta realize that Bear Bryant sacrificed the 1954 season. He was there in 1954 to make a point. 
He wanted the players to realize that he was going to build character and you were going to do it his way. And that sacrifice ended up in a record of one and nine, which was Bear Bryant's only losing season in 38 years of coaching. The next year, despite being put on probation for recruiting violations, Bryant's Aggies began a three-year stretch in which they won 24 games, including the conference championship in 1956. The star of those teams was John David Crow, a dynamic running back who had become Bryant's only Heisman Trophy winner. Coach Bryant made a statement that if they didn't give that trophy to John David, they ought to quit giving it. Coach Bryant was not a person to brag on players. And when he made that statement, I probably picked up enough folks to beat out the next guy. The fact that I was Coach Bryant's only Heisman Trophy winner, that means more to me than actually winning the trophy because he's such a legend. Coming up next, Bryant makes his way back home and a state finds a savior. keeps me closer to the people I love. Everyone I know is on AOL. I have a best friend that lives in Denver with AOL. I talk to her every day. We send pictures of our kids to their grandparents. Oh, my grandpa loves AOL. He's on all the time. Opening emails like Christmas. You know, you just never know what's coming. Definitely keeps me connected to family and friends. I mean, I'm even on my grandma's buddy list. Am I on your buddy list? Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> America Online, so easy to use, no wonder it's number one. Call 1-800-4-ONLINE. Hey, Edge Gel is gonna clean up your act with Edge Clean Shave Gel. Edge Clean. Edge Clean's got a built-in facial cleanser that helps lift dirt and oil every time you lather. To help lift dirt and oil every time you shave. Edge Clean Complete. So clean up your act with Edge Clean Shave Gel. Inevitably, there will come a time in your life when you realize you need a cell phone. And when that time comes, we'll be here. On the NFL Today, Deion Sanders catches up with Marshall Falk, plus Oakland's coach Gruden and Vinny of the Jets. The playoff pressure is on Sunday on CBS. Under Bear Bryant, Texas A&M had returned to its former glory. But sometime during the 1957 season, Bryant's struggling alma mater came calling with an offer he couldn't refuse. What he said was, it's just like if you're out playing in the yard and you hear your mama calling, and you think she just has some chores to do, you might not quit playing around and doing what you're doing and rush to get there. But if you thought she needed you, you'd get there as quick as you could. Alabama hadn't had much success in the few years before Coach Bryant went there. They had won four games in three years, so they needed some turning around. Coach Bryant was the item when he came across the Mississippi, all the other coaches had to get off their rocking chairs and go to work. Coach Bryant worked 24 hours a day. He slept in his office. He had a shower in there for a reason. Soon after his arrival in Tuscaloosa, Bryant met with his incoming freshmen to tell them what he expected. I can remember sitting in there and Coach Bryant telling us that he liked the way folks were accepting his playing. He told us that if we did what he told us to do, we'd win the national championship. You'll win the national championship. I guarantee you that you'll be national champions. Picture this, all of us 18, 19 year old starry eyed freshmen, a national championship. I don't know if anybody really believed that was gonna happen to us. 
One player who might have believed was freshman quarterback Pat Trammell, a competitor very much in Bryant's image. They had signed three or four different quarterbacks, and they were sitting around talking about who was going to be the quarterback. And my dad pulled out a pocket knife, opened it up, and threw it on the table and said, I'm the quarterback. There's no more discussion. Y'all talk about what other positions you're going to have. He was very confident. He was in charge when he was in the huddle. He was a winner. That was a great play by Pat Trammell. He got rid of the ball. He got to Butch Wilson. Trammell also had something very few of Brian's players ever had the guts to stand up to his intimidating coach. Coach Bryant drew that play on the neck and he slid it over at a trammel and trammel just eating like he normally would. And, it, and then Coach Bryant said, Pat, what do you think about this? And Pat just looked over and says, I don't think it'll work worth a damn. During the game sometimes they'd send in plays and Pat would reject them. He'd jump on those coaches, unreal. Pat ran that football team. Under Trammell, the Tide's record improved each year. But there was still some coaching to do if Bryant wanted to achieve his goal. In 1960, we played Tennessee in Knoxville, and we were down at halftime. Coach Bryant came in, and he read everybody the right act. It was bad. I remember sitting in the floor and pulling my legs back close to me there. I didn't want anything to be sticking out that might give him a reason to take a swat at it. But the same situation happens in Atlanta a couple of months later. We had not played really well against Georgia Tech in the first half, and we were down 15 to nothing at the halftime. And We were all petrified. We knew when Coach Bryant came through the door, he was going to Tennessee all over Again. I don't think any of us took our helmets off because we didn't know whether he was going to scream and yell or throw things or what. Well, let me tell you something. The man was the master. He walked through the door and he said, all right, we got them right where we want them. This just makes it perfect. This just makes it perfect. We're behind. They're all fired up. We got class, we're gonna find it out. And he starts jumping on the coaches and the managers, get these guys some water, get them some juice, and he's going around and he's rubbing everybody, and he began to lift people up. And he told us what we had to do to win. They never made the line of scrimmage the second half. We just shut them down completely. We went back out and kicked a field goal at the end of the game. Beat them 16-15. Coach Bryant was brilliant that way. He had a way of beating people. Especially in 1961, the year that proved Bryant a prophet. The Tide went 11-0. As he had promised, the Bear won the first of his six national championships. I just want to brag on our team. I think they proved their greatness beyond any doubt. We're particularly proud of our seniors because they came to the university four years ago when things were at a low ebb, when they only won three or four games in four years. They had enough confidence in their state university and in themselves, and in four years they wound up being what I think is the best team in the United States. When we return, Bryant's coaching methods come under fire and the bear fights to save his career. The bow. Resistance becomes strength. Becomes power. The power to change and reshape your entire body. This is Bowflex, an entire gem and one easy to use machine. So powerful, it delivers over 60 health club quality exercises with up to 410 pounds of resistance in any room in your home. Strength training with Bowflex is so effective that we guarantee you'll get the results you want in six weeks or less. One simple workout, 20 minutes a day, three days a week. You can target every area you want to work on. Upper body, abs, lower body, and even aerobic exercise. Bowflex is real. The results are real. And you can own one with no money down and payments as low as $33 per month. For a free video and brochure, call or go online at bowflexdirect.com. Do the research. Listen to real customers. Then place your order online and get started. Working out with Bowflex is easy and it's effective. 
you can get results like tighter abs, firmer legs, stronger arms, and a great chest without stepping foot into a gym. When I first started, I was 280 pounds. Now I'm 246. I mean, I've had my kids even say, Dad, your arms are looking bigger, your chest looks bigger. See, I started out at 215 pounds, and I got down to 160 pounds. I lost four inches in my waist, uh, gained like two inches in my chest. Uh, my clothes fit me so much better. I feel good about myself. Uh, I'm in better shape now at 50, probably, than I was when I was in my 20s. I'm just sorry I didn't find a Bowflex 40 years ago. Take the Bowflex Challenge and get the power to change your body in six weeks. Call right now for a free video and brochure. Bowflex, the power is yours. Hey, sports fans, for all of your news, scores, expert analysis, and fantasy advice, go to cbs.sportsline.com or AOL keyword CBS Sportsline. Bear Bryant's 1961 national championship team had been built in his image, a ferocious collection of overachievers who surrendered just 25 points the entire season. And now, ladies and gentlemen, meet Darwin Holt, the defensive star of this great football team. Darwin, congratulations on a great game. I know you almost have felt good with that goal line stand out there a few minutes ago. We sure did, I tell you. They, they've been talking all year that our defense hadn't been tested, but it was tested well, today. It was tested today, that's for sure, Darwin. Darwin Holt was an outstanding linebacker at Alabama, and he wasn't very big. He was probably five foot seven, weighed about 165 pounds and just mean as a snake. Certain times of the week, he didn't wear gear. I mean, he was a physically tough guy. But in a 1961 game against Georgia Tech, Holt was accused of turning his toughness into violence when he delivered a vicious and suspect hit that severely injured Tech's chick Granning. What happened is the guy shanked the ball and the ball came off the side of his foot. I'm not allowed to watch the football because I've got to be my eyes on this guy. The moment he makes that turn, I've got to hit him. So when the guy shanked the ball, I overran him. All I could get on him was a forearm. And it just happened to catch Chick right on the end of the chin right there. And back then, we only had single face masks. His face just exploded. Broke his upper and lower jaw, and his teeth were laying on the ground. That's what I saw. His face looked like a medicine ball. And they took that and put it in the paper, and of course, everybody just went wild and crazy. A year later, that incident was the centerpiece of a Saturday Evening Post article, which accused Bryant of advocating brutal football. Bryant saw himself in the midst of a media storm at that point. They were not only attacking Darwin Holt, they were attacking him. They were attacking his character, the way he conducted his business, and there was nothing more basic about Paul Bryant than the way he conducted himself on the field. Get ready, let's get ready, let's get ready! He knew that the human mind was stronger than the body, and he knew he could take that human mind and manipulate it to force that body to do more than it thought it was capable of doing. Did Paul Bryant teach brutal football? That depends on what you mean by brutal football. <laughs> Bryant wanted his players to go full speed and to hit with absolute reckless abandon. What I'm trying to say is one of the best things you can do is that little old spring. Come on, just come on, come on. That little old spring. Oh, you're getting some. The other teams would sometimes call it dirty, but it wasn't dirty. It would just rock them, sock them, football. <laughs> When I was talking to him about being the tough one of the boys, he said, honey, if you don't make them get out there and get tough, when they get out on the field in a real football game, they'll get killed. College football is brutal. Ask anybody that plays it. Just don't ask the press. A few months after the first article, the Post came after Bryant again, this time accusing him of a much more serious charge, conspiring with another coach to fix a game. The Saturday Evening Post had a story about a supposed college football fix scandal that involved Coach Bryant and Wally Butts, the former coach at Georgia. An insurance agent in Atlanta was somehow tied into a cross phone line and overheard a phone conversation between Coach Bryant and Wally Butts. And he took a great deal of notes, even though he understood very little of it. There was reference to several plays that Georgia ran and players' strengths and weaknesses. The circulation of the Saturday Evening Post was shrinking, and they were engaged in some kind of a plan 
to increase the circulation by engaging in sophisticated muckraking. Bear Bryant was really hurt by all this. He was talking about it, and tears came to his eyes because the hardest thing in the world for a coach or anyone else is to refute an accusation. I welcome this opportunity to tell the people of Alabama that these charges are false in every sense of the word. I want to take this time to deny them with every force at my command. Never in my life have I attempted to rig or fix any ball game, either as a player or as a coach. He called the Attorney General of the United States, Robert F. Kennedy, and he said, I'd like to come to Washington and talk to you about a problem. Coach Bryant flew to Washington, met him. Bobby already knew all about the story and said that the Justice Department had already looked into it and knew there wasn't any factual substance to it at all. Bryant's case was never prosecuted, and the bear, along with Butts, successfully sued the Saturday Evening Post for libel. But to him, the damage had already been done. Bryant was wounded. Certain things were sacred to him, and his good name was absolutely as sacred as his reputation on the football field. He felt that his good name had been tarnished, and frankly, he would never be the same. Coming up, as the winds of change whip around Bryant, the Bears' legacy is at stake. driving down the cost of home improvement with a new program to make low prices even lower. With special buys and new lower prices all over the store and at homedepot.com. Just look for the hammer symbol. It means we've got lower prices nailed. Happy holidays from all of us at CBS. 42 Daily News brings you more, more in-depth, detailed local news coverage than any other station. How do we do it? It's about time and how we use it in our newscasts. First, we move from one story to another without a lot of talk in between. We get straight to the point with the important information you need. That means more time for what's important to you. 42 Daily News, don't you think it's about time you watch? Nervous about your first day? No, nervous about yours. Who is it? It's the president. Good morning, Mr. President. No, I'm not nervous. All stand! The Supreme Court of the United States. Joseph Novelli is the Supreme Court's newest justice. Good morning. May God bless you and give you wisdom. Let's go make history. Joe Mantegna. I'll do my best to fulfill your trust, Mr. President. First Monday, series premiere CBS January 15th. David Lamb, only on 42 Daily News. It's about time. We now return to the bear, the legend of Coach Paul Bryant. In the early 1960s, the one person in Alabama as visible as Bear Bryant was the state's controversial governor, George Wallace. Wallace was a political creature, and he recognized the politics as they existed in that time in the South, which was that the majority of the voters in the state of Alabama wanted segregation. To the responsible citizens of the state, this was a disgrace, but they didn't know what to do about it. Coming from Western Pennsylvania, I never heard about segregation. I didn't know that it existed. Believe me, there were many of us that were looking for the change. When change did come in June of 1963, and the University of Alabama was integrated despite Wallace's stand at the schoolhouse door. The policy didn't include athletics. They were forced to let minorities into their school. 
but that didn't mean that they had to let them play football. This was much more important than education. The question of integrating football teams was a very difficult subject and one that Coach Bryant had lots of regrets about. He could have done it in 63, but I think, frankly, Bryant was more concerned about winning football games and less about making social statements. Bryant could have done anything he wanted to do. He was the most dominant figure in the state of Alabama, bigger, arguably, than George Wallace. It's a pleasure for me as the governor of Alabama to present this year the trophy, the governor's trophy, to you and the Crimson Tiders of Alabama. Congratulations, you're one of the greatest. He realized that he was not the kind of man to carelessly spend his political capital, so he bided his time. Just as important, as long as Bryant was winning with his skinny white boys, he didn't need to integrate. To many, Bama's back-to-back -back national championships in 1964 and 65, followed by an undefeated season in 1966, validated the school's position. But by 1967, the winds of change were in the air. Spring practice for the Crimson Tide of Alabama. And everything seems to be just like any previous year, but it's not. Among the players, pass receiver Andrew Purnell one of three Negroes on the squad. When the first black football players came out at Alabama, Coach Bryant called a special meeting and said that we're going to have three black players come out for spring practice this year, and I want them treated exactly the way that you would want to be treated yourself. None of them made it. Whether that was racism or whether it was just the fact that most walk-ons didn't make it, who can say? We haven't had so far many, if any, that qualified academically and athletically both, but certainly feel like that there'll be some in the area in the near future. When the local chapter of the NAACP came to him and asked him to integrate the team, he opened his desk drawer and handed him a list. He had the names of the 25 best black players in America. He said, if you can get any one of those young men to come to Alabama, I'll desegregate this football team. Coach Bryant said, the problem is none of the ones that we want to play for Alabama want to go to Alabama because they heard about Wallace's stand in the schoolhouse door or they thought they weren't be welcome there. The Imperial Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan was right down the street in Tuscaloosa. That was his headquarters, for crying out loud. Finally, after two mediocre seasons in 1969 and 1970, Bryant sensed the time was right and asked his friend, USC coach John McKay, to help enlighten his state. Coach McKay walked into my office and he said, come on, let's go. We're going to the airport. So we go to the Horizon Room of Western Airlines. In walks Coach Bryant with his houndstooth hat on, you know. They greet each other, and coach says, what's it about, Paul? And he says, well, I'd like to have you all come down to Alabama and play us next year, and I'll give you $150,000. Coach says, I'll tell you what I'll do, Paul. We'll come down and play. If you'll come back and play us in L.A. next year. They shook hands, and that's how the game started. He knew all along what was going to happen to his team. He'd had films. He knew what kind of athletes we had. He knew the team was going to get beat soundly, and then he wouldn't have any problems after that. In 1970, the University of Southern California came to Legion Field in Birmingham to play Alabama in the first game of the season. We were a little bit apprehensive about it, I think, uh, because we were going to the South. We were aware of what was going on socially in the country. The driver said, I hear you all got a lot of niggers on your team. Don Anderson, the sports information director, said, what? He said, I hear you all got a lot of niggers on your team. Anderson said, no, we don't. We have a lot of blacks on our team. And the driver said, have it your way. Some of those players, especially African Americans, packed pistols in their luggage. There were people who were prepared for any eventuality. I wasn't one of them. But the violence that occurred was, of course, not before or after the game. The violence was on the field when Sam Bam Cunningham went over, around, and through Brian's skinny white boys. It wasn't a typical game because we were so much physically stronger than them, faster than them, and quicker than them. Sam was a physical specimen. And Sam was running over people. It's a good thing that McKay and Coach Bryant were good friends, otherwise the score would be 100 to something. As the gun sounds, here goes Coach McKay to shake Coach Bryant's hand. And I was waiting for Coach Bryant to really be mad, and he put his hand out to Coach McKay, and he says, thanks a lot, old buddy. Bryant came into the locker room and asked McKay if he could take Sam Cunningham down to the Alabama locker room. He took Sam from our locker room over to the Alabama locker room and introduced him to the players there. Barry said, gentlemen, this is what a football player looks like. He meant more than just his athletic ability. 
he met the football player who has a different shade of skin than you do. As Bryant himself said, Sam Bam Cunningham did more for integration in Alabama in 60 minutes than Martin Luther King Jr. had done in 20 years. And I think that's probably an accurate comment. The next season, John Mitchell became the first African American to play for the Crimson Tide. And a new era in Alabama football began. Coach Brown was always fair to all his players. Color didn't make any difference with him. I wasn't treated, or Wilbur Jackson wasn't treated any differently than any of the white players. I can remember Coach Brown was talking to some reporters, and they asked him, how many black players you have on your score? And Coach Brown said, I don't have any black players. And they said, well, how many white players do you have? Coach Brown said, I don't have any white players. He said, I have players. Despite Bryant's attitude, this fact remains. After the school was integrated, it still took eight years for Alabama football to follow. It's one of the puzzles of his career, and this is where Coach Bryant could have led more forcefully than he did. He was definitely too slow to integrate the team. I don't buy as much as some that it took Sam Cunningham to, to integrate the University of Alabama. I think he was a consummate politician, and he knew his audience. He knew that if he brought blacks in too early, there might be a price to pay. I would have liked to have seen him do it earlier. His legacy would have been enhanced a little bit more. He was by no means an innovator in race any more than he was an innovator in football. He was an opportunist. He saw the way in which the world changed. And the genius of Bryant was not that he was out front of change, because that oftentimes makes you a martyr. The genius of Bryant was that he always understood the drift of history. He understood if you stand in the way, you get blown away. He was not going to take on Alabama culture over race. But once he saw Alabama culture changing, and once he saw that you couldn't win as a football coach, he rolled with the tide. Up next, the Bear contemplates retirement, but is rejuvenated by new attitudes on and off the field. If your hair is thinning, call 1-800-HAIR-CLUB now for this free booklet. The Hair Loss Resource Center, giving you the information you need to make an educated decision on hair loss. Whether you're just starting to thin or experiencing advanced hair loss, Hair Club has an option that's right for you. Hair Club, the answers you've been waiting for. Last year I was on a cell phone. I said, make sure we have a backup for O'Neill. He heard Captain Antoneal. So that's when we got free and clear with Sprint PCS. Real clear calls and nationwide long distance included. So now, wherever we go, what do we have? A backup for O'Neill. The Sprint PCS free and clear plan with nationwide long distance included. Every minute, every day. If you're taking aspirin for your heart, there's important news about mixing medication you need to discuss with your doctor. It's been shown that ibuprofen, the pain reliever in Advil and Motrin, in some cases may interfere with the way aspirin works to protect your heart. Don't let another pain reliever interfere with aspirin's life-saving benefits. To relieve tough pain, take extra strength Bayer Aspirin. Nothing's proven stronger and more aspirin won't interfere. Bayer, take it for pain, take it for life. Aspirin is not appropriate for everyone, so be sure to talk to your doctor before you begin an aspirin regimen. You like simple better than complicated. You like quick better than slow. You like easy better than hard. So now pay with SpeedPass at both Exxon and Mobile. It's fast, it's free, and it links to a check card or major credit card you already have. Call toll free or visit SpeedPass.com. We're drivers too. An elephant disrupts the survivor camp. And don't miss the Super Immunity Challenge. Ah! Two episodes to go. All new Survivor, CBS Thursday. Once the gates were opened, it wasn't long before Alabama had a fully integrated football team. And that wasn't the only change in Tuscaloosa. During the early 70s, there was the hippie movement. Everybody had long hair. Now, he wouldn't let us have long hair. At that time, it was just, you know, buzz cut, and we looked like military guys. Johnny Musso was elected by the Alabama players to go to Coach Bryant and ask him if they could let their hair grow out. Bryant was bitterly opposed to it and turned him down. 
That week, he was watching the Texas-Oklahoma game on national television. The camera showed Billy Graham and those beautiful gray, wavy locks. And the camera showed the President of the United States, Lyndon B. Johnson. The wavy locks of his hair were cascading over his collar. And Coach Bryant had to rethink that issue. We had a three-hour meeting with the different coaches saying, I think the hair ought to be up to here, and the hair ought to be down to here. I took a book I'd gotten from my hairstylist to Coach Bryant. I said, Coach, we need to know how players can wear their hair. He took that big book and a big old black pencil, and he opened the page up, and then he took, this won't do. This won't do. And he flipped through that entire book about that thick. Coach Bryant says, hey, we got too many people worried about hair. And he says, I got one hair coach, and that's going to be Jim Goostree. He said, if Jim says their hair is too long, then he'll tell them to cut it. Coach Bryant, being the general of this troop, showed morale was important. And as a great general, you learn to adjust. And he adjusted off what he thought we needed to do to what he felt might be a better way. On the field, Bryant was also looking for a better way. After Bama struggled with those two mediocre seasons in 1969 and 70, the Bear made one of the most important decisions of his coaching career. Before the 71 season, Scott Hunter had graduated from the team and he was the quarterback and we were strictly a passing offense, probably throwing the ball 30, 35 times a game. We went through the spring in the same offense, and at the end of the spring, he had completely made his mind up that we could not win in that offense. Coach Bryant had a staff meeting, and he said, boys, I'm not going on like this. And I think we were really at a crossroad in Coach Bryant's career. He was thinking about quitting when he was in that passion game. He had to come up with a new adjustment. He said, we are going to the wishbone. Anybody got any comments? And we said, no, we don't want to do that. We want to keep on doing what we're doing. And he says, you got about two minutes to get on my side, or y'all can look for another job. The only problem with Brian's decision is that he didn't know anything about the wishbone offense. But he had a friend who did, Texas coach Darrell Royal. Coach Bryant called me. He said, I want to come see you. We'll cut off the phones and bring a projector up there and we'll look at film and talk about the wishbone. Huge blackboards for three days. We went over every film, every technique, demonstrated against each other in the room. <laughs> and we had like three weeks of preparation to play Southern Cal in the opening game. He was keeping it a secret because Southern Cal had embarrassed him in Birmingham. Our one chance against them was the element of surprise. We sent them all our film. Sure enough, we got their film, but it was all from the year before when they were a passing team. And Scott Hunter was throwing the ball. Johnny Musso running the ball a little bit. When the riders came in that year to watch Alabama practice, we went back to the offense we ran that spring, and we threw the ball every down. And then when the riders left, we went right back to preparing for Southern Cal. We had a player that had played for us at Alabama out on the West Coast. And I called him, and I said, are you close to Southern Cal campus? He said, yeah. I said, how about go by there and see if they're working against the wishbone? Call me back. He said, no, they're not working on it. And I talked to him on Friday night. I said, Coach, do they have any idea? He said, I don't think they have any idea. We opened up the game, and they were not prepared. And they got us. We thought they were going to shift and do something. No, they're running the straight wishbone. The first three times we got the ball, we scored. We were leading 17 to nothing in the first quarter. I'm going to win it 17 to 10. That one game was huge in Coach Bryant's career. It was his 200th win. It was his birthday. And he called me after the game. He was on cloud nine. From that game on, the Bears' Crimson Tide embarked on a period of unmatched dominance. From 1971 to the end of the decade, Alabama won 97 times while losing just 11, and won the fourth, fifth, and sixth national championships of Bryant's career. Bryant's most interesting because he did something that very few people are able to do, and that is to reinvent a second stage of success in their lives. 
Only a few older men are able to reinvent themselves. Most of the examples one finds are in the artistic field. Picasso with his brilliant late paintings, uh, W.B. Yeats with, did some of his finest poems after the age of 70. Bear Bryant was not an artist in that sense, but he was an artist of football. Coming up next, the gruff taskmaster and the compassionate soul. It's been said, men tend to communicate shoulder to shoulder. If that's the case, these guys are saying, let's change the world. Let's make a difference. Let's act as we are called. The Knights of Columbus. In service to one, in service to all. Spin, spin, spin the globe. It's your turn to spin the globe. All around the world, Siemens is energizing the cities and towns we live in. We engineer new ways to efficiently generate, distribute, and use power. And by providing energy to people everywhere, we're giving them the power to live better. Spin, spin, spin the globe. It's your turn to spin the globe. At the Home Depot, we're driving down the cost of home improvement with a new program to make low prices even lower. With special buys and new lower prices all over the store and at homedepot.com. Just look for the hammer symbol. It means we've got lower prices nailed. Is your dandruff sending the wrong signals? Go! Go! No, no. Get Selsun Power. Doctors recommend Selsun Blue. Man, that is awesome. Get Selsun Power. And 2001 with some fun in the sun. Purdue battles Jason Gesser and Washington State in the Wells Fargo Sun Bowl. It'll be a scorcher Monday on CBS. There is something bear-like about you. By that I mean, you know how bear is a nice, friendly-looking creature, but you have a feeling that it could lay you out with one blow. Are you ever easily moved to violence? Uh, no. It's the last time you no decked way. anyone. No way. No? I, I'm a um, peace-loving person. Brian was a real contradiction in some ways. He could be the foulest mouth, hardest drinking, wildest living guy in some ways. I was here for four years. And I don't believe I ever talked to him but twice. There's guys scared to death of him. He scared me half to death. If I see him coming down the street, I'd go another way. Coach Bryant looks so he says, Well, Joe, you got the game plan? I said, Yes, sir, I think so. Ooh, he came down on me with both feet. You think so, son? It's time to know. But he also was the most genuine, down-to-earth person that you'd ever want to meet. Hello, Jim. How you doing, man? Hey, you're looking well. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Jake, you won't be you too, boy. Yeah. Thank you. Hello, Doctor. Fine. Good to see you. Hello, sweetie. Hi. Give me a little hug, gal. Yeah. There's a famous story about the first Sugar Bowl played indoors. Alabama played Penn State that day. And before the game, Joe Paterno says, you're not wearing your hat today. What's the deal? Without missing a beat, he said, my mom always told me to take my hat off indoors. Like all good Southern gentlemen, Bear Bryant was very respectful of the women in his life, especially his wife. Mary Harmon Bryant, who he had met and married when they were students at Alabama. You really like football that much? Are you that much of a fan? Well, I like to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we all figure anybody could deal with Coach Bryant. <laughs> what she did had to be very special. When I first knew Coach Bryant, I thought, what a man. Oh, God, this is. And over the years, I realized that he wasn't mean at all. He had so many good qualities. And you didn't have to look too deeply to find out what they were. Coach used to always seem to really recognize when there was a young child around. 
He seemed to really have a soft spot in his heart for the kids. His grandson said, I don't know what he did to y'all, but when I crawled up in his lap, he was my teddy bear. He loved to go hunting, loved to go fishing, and he liked golf. He loved to watch Fred Sanford. He loved all in the family. Always acknowledge the little guy, the billman, the guy parking cars, people like that. While Bryant rarely revealed his emotional side, there were two events that changed the way he looked at people and at life. In 1968, he learned that Pat Trammell, the quarterback on his first national championship team, was gravely ill. When the call came from Pat, said, Coach, I'm going to die, and he did very shortly, it suddenly hit him. I know that took a lot out of Coach Bryant, yeah. Pat was healthy and strong and everything, and then the next thing you know, he's not with us anymore. I don't know if Coach Bryant ever got over that. I was on the plane that flew up for the funeral with Coach Bryant, and I don't think I've ever seen him as sad and hurt. To see him cry, to see those lips quiver, um, you knew that he was a very compassionate person. He told my mom not to worry because you can imagine a 28-year-old woman with two small children, the things that go through your mind when your husband dies. Now, Coach Bryant said we needed to start a foundation so that we could help Pat Trammell's two children. And back then, that's all he had to do was suggest something and things got done. He set up a scholarship fund called the Paul Bryant Scholarship that I know my sister and I were the first recipients of it. And, you know, it paid our way through college. And I believe to this date, there's been over 700 children of his former players to attend the University of Alabama on the scholarship. The only thing that was negative about the scholarship is I had to go over there once a quarter and take my grades to him. And I wasn't quite as smart as my dad. And if I made B's and C's, you know, he'd get mad at me and tell me my dad never made a B the whole time he was in college. He didn't surrender, mind you. His basic attitude toward preparing young people to play the game of football but he turned in a way where he kept his hands on them more gently as they went on into their real life. You stop and think about it. He takes a high school kid, he brings him into his program. He gives him an education, he teaches him about life. The sun is probably the most powerful thing there is, and it doesn't make much noise. So we expect you to be seen, but not heard. One thing O'Brien always talked about family. He asked, did you call your mama, write a letter home? I want you to write home regularly. It only takes a few minutes, and it'll mean a lot to them, and it'll mean more to you over the years. He brought things to the players so much more than just football. Continue to attend church regularly. Advice about life, that was the main thing that he would teach you, you know, it, it wasn't just going to be football all the time. I don't coach football anymore, I coach people. I was suspended my junior year for the last couple of games of the season. I broke a training rule. It wasn't a major deal. It was something that was major to him. I started staying out a little bit too late, not going to study halls and hanging out and having a lot of fun. He sent me a telegram. It said, you have been indefinitely suspended, Coach Paul W. Bryant. I made the poorest grades anyone ever went to Alabama. I cut more classes. I did all the things you're not supposed to do. And I tell them that. But that's why I'm not going to let them do it. I thought it was the right thing to do. And it was the most difficult thing I've had to do in my life, I'll tell you that. In 1974, Bryant would confront a much more serious situation. In a game against TCU, the cruel fate of a single horrific play brought him into the life of Kent Waldrop. A play came in that called for me to carry the ball around right in on a sweet play. The coaches specifically said, get outside quick. So instead of playing the blocking the way it may have been, I just printed outside as fast as I could. And when I turned the corner, there was nothing but a sea of Alabama jerseys. I ducked my shoulder and hit the first couple of players. They were pushing me, and a player who had been blocked and was on the ground threw a roadblock into my legs. And when he did it, I came down head first. As soon as my head hit in the position that I landed, it snapped my neck, and I was instantly paralyzed. It's one of the few times that we Writers can talk about remembering Coach Bryant with tears in his eyes. He was extremely upset and moved by that. Coach Bryant was at the hospital all the time. 
He was there when I was going through surgery. He was there lots of times where he would never come into my room, just stand in the hall and talk with my parents. And they said he must have cried every time he came. Now, whenever he came into the room and stood over me, you know, there was never a tear. It was always, hey, boy, how much longer are you going to lay there? You know, we want to get you back up. Bryant, at that point, was in his 60s. He was a mellower, and he became a big figure in Kent Waltrip's life. Nobody expected Coach Bryant, the University of Alabama, and the whole state of Alabama to react the way they did. They truly adopted me as if I was one of their own. They raised money for my rehabilitation. They bought my first van. Coach Bryant told my parents that as long as he was alive, I was one of his boys. My whole family appreciates that and is grateful. That's a story that I've told my boys and hopefully they'll pass on because it is truly one of the unique relationships I'll ever have in my life. Coming up, Bryant secures his place in the record book and leaves a lasting legacy. keeps me closer to the people I love. Everyone I know is on AOL. I have a best friend that lives in Denver with AOL. I talk to her every day. We send pictures of our kids to their grandparents. Oh, my grandpa loves AOL. He's on all the time. Opening email is like Christmas. You know, you just never know what's coming. Definitely keeps me connected to family and friends. I mean, I'm even on my grandma's buddy list. Am I on your buddy list? Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. America Online, so easy to use, no wonder it's number one. Call 1-800-4-ONLINE. This holiday from Honda, we've gone all out on gifts that go. We've rolled back MSRP's $200 on our smallest XRs, CR80s, and smallest sport tracks. On our bigger XRs, we've added bonus bucks, $200 towards merchandise. And on all XRs and CRs, there's no payment and no interest for three months, and no down payment with the Honda card. Gifts that go, going all out for the holidays. All season long, Alabama football fans have looked forward to this day and the chance for Coach Paul Bear Bryant to become the winningest college coach of all time. Bear Bryant's march to history had taken him from Maryland to Kentucky to Texas and finally home to Alabama. It was fitting then that the win that gave him the record was a 28-17 victory over arch rival Auburn. I just want to say that I love you. I know everybody else loves you. Congratulations, Coach. He did not use it to market Paul Bryant. It meant more to him that it was done at the University of Alabama without putting a name on it. It was an appropriate time, and I was getting damn tired of waiting on it. <laughs> There wasn't much left for Bryant to accomplish when he began his 38th year of coaching in 1982. Revered and respected by his players and his peers, he had long since reached the top of his profession. But he was also nearing 70 in a young man's game, and his opponents jumped at the chance to take advantage of his failing health and diminishing desire. Recruiting, particularly here in the South, is very competitive. And there's no question that when a coach gets up in age, questions comes up, is he going to be there for a player's entire four years at a university? Two days before National Signing Day, we ran this story with a big picture of Bryant. It looked like the craters of the moon, all the wrinkles and the lines in his face. Pat Dye later told me that he got 50 copies of that article, and he had somebody send them anonymously to every one of his top recruits, including Bo Jackson. 
I won't say that's a lie, but that's inaccurate. You didn't have to use it against him. Kids are smart enough to know when a guy walks in your house and he's 68, you ain't got to be Einstein to figure out that he was having a few health problems too. There were pill bottles on his windowsill behind his desk. I said, where do all those pills go? He said, oh, me, I got pills for my kidney and pills for my liver. It is no secret he lived in a robust manner. Yeah, he loved to party. There's no doubt that Bryant had a problem with alcohol. And in 1978, he actually checked himself into a clinic. For some time now, the bear had been thinking he'd had enough. He made his decision on a late November afternoon in Birmingham in a game against Auburn, the type of game that had once stirred his heart. Last couple of seconds on the clock, I scored the winning touchdown. It was said there was poor Coach Bryant while these Auburn people were acting like they had just discovered the fountain of youth. It was like a Shakespearean tragedy. He asked everybody in the family, do you think I ought to retire? And I told him no. He said, Mark, I'm just tired. I'm just really tired. It comes time in every profession when you need to hang it up. That time has come for me as head football coach at the University of Alabama. On December 29th, 1982, in the Liberty Bowl against Illinois, Paul Bear Bryant took the field for the last time as the coach of the Crimson Tide. The game went back and forth. We had gone ahead, and it looked like this might be their last series. And one of my defensive ends came from the backside and sacked their quarterback. And of course, in his excitement, he jumped straight up in the air. Coach grabbed my arm and he said, haven't you coached him to lay on that quarterback when we're trying to run the clock? With less than a minute to go in his final game, oh, he's always coaching. After nearly a half century of football, Bear Bryant was finished with the sport that had defined his life. Many years before he retired, somebody asked him, if you retired, coach, what would you do? He said, I'll croak in a week. He was off by a month. Former University of Alabama football coach Paul Bear Bryant died today of a heart attack. He had been stable and had been talking to nurses immediately prior to this attack. All measures were unsuccessful and he was pronounced dead at 1.30 p.m. And flags in Alabama were at half staff. Devastating. Awful. Coach Bryant's dead. And he's so dang tough, you just didn't think about Coach Bryant dying. Here's God, and God can't die, but uh, he did. Mayor Harmon was very composed. Her interest was that the funeral would be something that would be dignified, it would be worshipful. At the conclusion of the service, a hearse was stationed to receive the casket. And when we moved out onto the steps, I never heard such a noise. I hardly was able to identify what it was. It sounded almost like thunder. There must have been 200 photographers. And the shutters of taking the picture of us coming down those steps is a memory that I will always cherish. At the church, they went by the football field and they stopped just for a minute. Well, of course, that tore me apart. People stood on both sides of the street, shoulder to shoulder. There must have been scores of police vehicles and state troopers to direct traffic all the way to Birmingham. The outpouring of love and affection from all over. It was awesome. It was wonderful. At every overpass, there were hundreds of people standing in reverence and in honor of Coach Bryant. That was the first time it hit me how many people loved him besides me. I've never experienced anything like the reverence for Coach Bryant. And it's still there. I would walk out of my office and there was Paul Bryant Boulevard and it was right beside Paul Bryant Conference Center and there's Paul Bryant Museum, Paul Bryant Stadium and Paul Bryant Athletic Dorm. 
Bear Bryant left much more than his name at Alabama. In passing into legend, he defined a university and a state and created one of the most noble traditions in the history of American sports. He was as rugged as a Marlboro man, as tough as John Wayne, and yet there was not a phony bone in his body. Alabama people respected that. He was the antidote to Alabama's inferiority complex. Because Alabama was number 48 in education, number 49 in highways, and number 50 in civil rights. But in football, Alabama was number one. <laughs> He had a lot of faults, but great men don't. But when you cut through it all, he's still the greatest football coach ever. End of story. I think he would want to be remembered for him, not how many games he won, but how many lives he touched, how many people he helped. We should all be so lucky as to have somebody close to Coach Brack cross our paths in our lifetime. Bryant was the embodiment of the American dream. Growing up in poverty, insecure by the end of his life, through hard work, perseverance, dedication, to become the most dominant figure in his profession. That's a confirmation of the very idea of America. The Bear, the legend of Coach Paul Bryant, is sponsored by Prudential Financial growing and protecting your wealth. America Online version 7.0. There's never been a better time to get online. And by Honda. This holiday, it's gifts that go time on motorcycles and ATVs at your Honda dealer. I don't think I ever saw anybody loved as much as my brother was loved by so many people. Bear Bryant is everywhere you look because he is a part of what we learned. He's a part of our history a part of our heritage. People trusted him. They sent their kids to the university because he was a man of high integrity. He acted as a parent. He guided. It made a difference. I guess you could call him the father of Alabama. Never have I ever taken anything that the man gave me and been led awry. To put it briefly, his body may be gone, but I think the spirit of Coach Bright will live forever. And he still stands by the goal line post. We're mighty proud that we had him for what time we did. He was a great man. In association with CBS Sports, this has been a Black Canyon production. Don't miss two hours of DC's finest, two Please. times the crime Please. fighting, two times the manion. I was getting the feeling that nobody was paying any attention. The District, CBS Tonight. Vote for your favorite new comedy at CBS.com and watch The People's Choice Sunday, January 13th. Up to 4,000 cash back. Financing starts at zero APR. Yes. 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 Ron Newton Pontiac Cadillac GMC says turn them loose. New Sonomas take 1,500 cash back or zero APR. Half ton Sierras get financing as low as zero APR. Full size Yukons get zero APR. Turn them loose. Up to 4,000 in rebate. Financing starts at zero APR. Plus, find North Alabama's best selection of new Pontiacs and Cadillacs. Yes. 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 Wider selection. Bigger discount. Lower financing. Turn them loose. Ron Newton Pontiac Cadillac GMC. This is it, the best prices of the year at Mazer Building Supply Outlet and Appliance, 1st Avenue South and 41st Street, downtown Birmingham. During our after Christmas event, not only get the best prices and the largest selection of merchandise, you can also buy with 12 months no interest through December 30th. We also have Alabama's largest selection of GE appliances at wholesale cost or less. Be sure to see our big ad in the newspaper on Christmas Day for hundreds of bargains. That's only at Mazer, where you always buy for less. It's the holidays, so go ahead, take two. Buy any pair of shoes in the store and get a second pair for 50% off. Mix and match thousands of styles of footwear. Your favorite brands are buy one, get one 50% off. So hurry into Just for Feet and take two. Just for the holidays, you've just got to come into Just for Feet. All branded apparel is now 40% off, including Nike, Adidas, and Reebok. And all your favorite team jackets are 50% off. Great savings on great gifts, only at Just for Feet. Sherry Jackson, only on 42 Daily News. It's about time. Rick 
Pitino today returns to Rupp Arena in a most unlikely homecoming. The Kentucky coach for eight golden years in the 90s. Last spring, he returned to the college game in the Bluegrass State, replacing Denny Crum at Louisville. Today, he brings his Cardinals to Rupp in a scene no Kentucky fan could ever imagine. Tubby Smith took over for Patino and immediately made his mark at Kentucky. In his first season, he won the 1998 National Championship. This season, the Wildcats are again among the NCAA elite. But today, their former coach and newfound arch rival returns to Lexington. It's Louisville and Kentucky on CBS. Rupp Arena has been waiting for this day since March the 21st when Rick Pitino signed on at Louisville. He has his Cardinals at 9 and 1, taken on Kentucky, and just one minute ago he made his entrance here at Rupp Arena, and he really surprised everyone coming through the Kentucky entrance. Jim, that's the only way he knows how. Old habits. A greeting with his former assistant, Tubby Smith, who now directs the Kentucky program. Hello, my friends. Happy holidays. Jim Nance with Billy Packer. I'd have to say it's one of the most anticipated scenes we've seen for a regular season game in years. It's, it's March and December. Well, imagine a Dean Smith going to coach at Duke or a Bobby Knight at Purdue. It's the same thing, plus the great rivalry between Louisville and Kentucky. Doesn't get much better than this, Jim. What did you think of the reaction when, when Rick came out on the well, floor? They didn't realize it really until he reached midcourt. He caught everybody off balance when he came out from the Kentucky entrance for the simple reason everybody was anticipating coming out from the visitor's locker room. His team has won eight in a row, all at home. What about the Cardinals? Well, this is a team that does not shoot well, does not rebound that well, but plays great defense and loves to take the three in the traditional Rick Pitino style. Today, they'll have to shoot well and keep Kentucky off the boards if they're going to stay in this game. And there you see the introduction, Rick Pitino. It's Louisville and Kentucky coming up next right here on CBS. CBA Sports coverage of the Road to the Final Four is sponsored by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. The Intel Pentium 4 processor, the center of your digital world. And by Bud Life, for the great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down, make it a Bud Life. Hey, Hallie Eisenberg, drinking a Pepsi. Actually, this isn't a Pepsi. It's new Pepsi Twist with lemon. And I'm not Hallie Eisenberg. <laughs> I'm Hallie Berry. Drinking Pepsi Twist. Well, it's not exactly Pepsi Twist. It's Diet Pepsi Twist. And I'm not exactly Hallie Berry. You know. <laughs> I'm Barry Bostwick. Who is Barry Bostwick? Like twists? Try new Pepsi Twist and regular and diet. A lemon twist on that great Pepsi taste. You like simple better than complicated. You like quick better than slow. You like easy better than hard. So now pay with Speed Pass at both Exxon and Mobile. It's fast, it's free, and it links to a check card or major credit card you already have. Call toll free or visit speedpass.com. We're drivers too. For something this big, you have to keep them focused. She keeps telling me I gotta focus. Where's your head at? Large capacity with wrinkle guard. Not a boy. It's the best time to get 0% financing on home appliances and free delivery on washers and dryers over $3.99 at the only store with the top six brands. Sears, where else? AOL keeps me closer to the people I love. Everyone I know is on AOL. I have a best friend that lives in Denver. With AOL, I talk to her every day. We send pictures of our kids to their grandparents. Oh, my grandpa loves AOL. He's on all the time. Opening email is like Christmas. You know, you just never know what's coming. Definitely keeps me connected to family and friends. I mean, I'm even on my grandma's buddy list. Am I on your buddy list? Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. America Online, so easy to use, no wonder it's number one. Call 1-800-4-ONLINE. Monday on Dave, ring in the new year with George Clooney and cooking with Martha Stewart. Not with your nose. <laughs> Plus, pedestrian theme songs, Monday on The Late Show.
The Cardinals and the Wildcats, the starting lineups for Rick Pitino's team at 9 and 1. The only loss was on the road at Oregon, the only road game of the year, and they were blitzed by 27. In the front court, excellent rebounder Ellis Miles with Joseph Sima at 6'8, a senior. Kurt Gaines is their best scorer, and Eric Brown. Three in the backcourt. Tubby Smith, the 98 national championship coach, with a new six year contract at Kentucky. Front court, Tayshawn Prince, the All America, with Jules Kamara. Backcourt, Fitch, Bogans, and an oncoming Cliff Hawkins. Actually, played just one minute in the game last year. Not a factor at all, but as you know, everybody was wondering who was going to take Saul Smith's spot at the point guard, and Hawkins has been outstanding. Especially the last two games against Duke and Indiana. Good toss. And Louisville, <laughs> the first possession. Seema didn't realize after he touches another player, he can catch it. He thought he had a hot potato in his hand. Sure looked like it. Oh, Fitch games. This is going to be a great matchup. Fitch, one of the best defenders in the country. Miles misfiring. Seema inside. And Fitch crashes the boards. Miles on his back. There is not, Jim, a better six foot four rebounder in the United States than Fitch. Watched him in practice yesterday, and much like you hear Bill Russell talking about the brains of rebounding, Fitch anticipates where that ball is being shot from and where you should go to get it. That's why at 6-4, he is such an outstanding rebound. Prince, baseliner, too strong. Brown with the board. Good rebounding inside by Brown. This is a tremendous differential in rebounding ability between these two teams. Seema does not have good hands, as you saw right there in the catch. Louisville has a good rebounder in Miles, but this Kentucky team for much of this early season has led the nation in rebounding margin. Gaines has got to use his height advantage over Fitch and get him posted up down inside some. Looking to rub off on nice solid screen. Time the shot clock hurts. And out to Hawkins. Louisville shooting 28% from three. Now, Rick Pitino wants these guys to take threes, and they will. But we saw in Kentucky's practice yesterday, they are going to let any four or five men players, the forwards or the centers, take any shots they want and really be out there on the three-point shooting of the perimeter players. The inside players for Louisville have had no success this season oh. making the three, stepping out. Bad shot by Hawkins, a good breakaway. Miles for the game's first two. Louisville scores first. Miles yesterday in practice really looked gimpy with his back and his legs. He was having a hard time getting around, but certainly broke out on that one. A bad play by Hawkins. If you're the point guard, you have responsibility and defensive balance. Gaines getting after Fitch. Fitch on the baseline and a bump called on Gaines. Kentucky at 7-2 on the year. The two losses, Western Kentucky, and then that Duke thriller in overtime at the Meadowlands a little more than a week ago. A game they more than likely could have won rather than lost. Wins against Indiana and North Carolina, although not as much sizzle as that would mean in most years. Bogans with a three. Good job that time by Brown, right in Bogans' face. They're taking away the outside three-point shot. Hurt. And Hawkins with a second rebound. He's bumped. That's the second on games. I would think that Rick Pitino would like at least one pass to get things started. That's the second time Hurt has come down and taken a quick shot. They can ill afford to have Gaines on the bench early. Gaines averages 20 points a game. Top player for Rick Pitino. And now with two fouls in the first two minutes. Well, what helps somewhat is he's guarding Fitch. Fitch has only taken 49 shots in the year. So he is not a guy that you would go to just to get that third five. Nice overplay. Seema very aggressive early and doing a good job inside with a couple of rebounds. Rick Pacino made a comparison yesterday between the first team he took over at Kentucky and this Louisville team. He said this team is much more athletic, a lot quicker. They don't shoot anywhere near as well, but are a better defensive team than the club he took over that got the 14 and 14 this first year at Kentucky. Logan's in traffic. Fitch with the three. 
So far, Louisville doing an excellent job inside rebounding against this Kentucky team. That's the third best rebounding team in the country. Yeah, it's Sema again with the rebound. Kentucky failing to score on its first four trips. Jules Kamara has not touched it inside at all. I think Kentucky's going to have to realize. You see Kentucky not guarding Sema that far away from the basket at all. I did not expect that kind of one-on-one -on -one move from about 18 feet. Prince, he likes that shot, Jack. Yeah. Kentucky at last. Well, Prince did that against North Carolina, just opening that game up and taking what was normally a big robbery and just turning it upside down early as he hit five threes in a row. Five straight possessions in that one. Hurt gets the soft roll. Nice smart play by Seema not to put his hands up on that ball as it was inside the cylinder. Prince thought about it, and they lost control. That's a traveling violation. Beautiful dribbling move. Nice defensive play by Miles. Here we see Seema. Would you have believed he goes right by Kamara, uses his natural hand there, and goes above Prince, who's an excellent shot blocker coming over from the weak side. Seema goes right over it. They didn't expect that out of a man who averages only three points a game. Tubby Smith has turned 50 in June. Five times he's gone against Rick Pitino. Former Patino assistant, but all those times he was at Georgia, he lost all five. And here we see Jim, a little altercation out front. Hurt going up against Hawkins, and he hit him in the chest. It wasn't a punch. Good piece of officiating here, particularly in a game that's as emotional as this one, to get the players just to play basketball. Miles will go. Oh, breaking. Oh, pitch had a piece of the jersey there, not called. Ball will now be taken out of bounds down at Kentucky's end because it touched no one. He was trying to hit Larry O'Bannon, who had just checked in. See if we don't have Fitch grabbing a little piece of the jersey right there. Got away with it. Could have been an intentional foul, two in the ball. It's a good move here to go into Kamara. Make things collapse a little bit. Kamara turn around, and Hurt comes in. Louisville has always had great rebounding guards. Kamara steals it, dishes in one move. Hawkins back to Prince. Foul first, though. Jim, there was bad distribution on the break that time. Fitch and Hawkins running side by side, neither one taking a lane. Now watch it right here. Bogans didn't have a good passing angle because the two guards were side by side. See him right there? If they had spread out on the wing a little bit more, it would have been a good distribution opportunity to get a three-on-one break that works. Adam Childs, number 22, replacing Cliff Hawkins. And Fitch almost got it to go. That foul was on Eric Brown. I really like the defensive rebounding technique by Louisville so far in this game. O'Bannon off the glass. And Kamar on the floor. And the arrow belongs to Louisville. Good hustle by O'Bannon coming back. Just reached in, didn't even know where the ball was. Frenetic pace early. Kentucky's made only one of its first seven. Cardinals 6 3 in the first break. This is Silverado Heavy Duty. Available with the Duramax diesel. The most powerful diesel you can get in a pickup. Silverado Heavy Duty. More truck from Chevy. of your digital world. It's been said, men tend to communicate shoulder to shoulder. If that's the case, these guys are saying, let's change the world. Let's make a difference. Let's act as we are called. Knights of Columbus, 
in service to one, in service to all. Sanders catches up with Marshall Falk, plus Oakland's coach Gruden and Vinny of the Jets. The playoff pressure is on Sunday on CBS. Jim Nance with Billy Packer, Rupp Arena, Lexington, Kentucky. There are five unbeaten teams in Division I basketball right now, led by Duke. The interesting one tonight, though, Billy. We've got an intense scene here. Well, it, Butler coming up. Yes, sir. Ball State, too, played in Oklahoma State. We know what Ball State has done against superior opponents uh, this year, knocking off UCLA and, and, and also playing outstanding ball against Kansas. So uh, could be something right there. Butler, Indiana tonight. Butler, Indiana in Indianapolis. So what an attraction. Very similar to today in terms of the history in there, although Indiana has never lost a game in that classic. And last touch by Louisville. In, in, right now, Kentucky's one for seven. It reminds me, Jim, going back to a game that, that uh, Louisville had all kinds of problems back in 99, where 21 of 22 shots to start the second half, they missed. Kentucky's got to get something going here offensively. And Tubby, as he always has great confidence in his bench, comes in with Esco. Marquise Estel, number 50, and Rashad Peruth, number two. It's rejected by Sima. This Kentucky team, by the way, we uh, should alert everyone to the fact that Marvin Stone was dismissed from the team two days ago. Right. High School All-America, who was a contributor here, started some games on and off since his freshman year. Did not come back for the first two practices after the Christmas break. Tubby dismissed him from the team on Thursday. Prince in and out. And Stone, you remember, had an outstanding game against uh, Louisville. And there he is right there, a young man who I thought would become a, one of Kentucky's great players over time. It just never worked out for him. I remember seeing him here two years ago for this matchup. Yep. We thought he had... Uh, 11 points, 7 rebounds. Yeah, big potential. And J.P. Blevins, who uh, would see a, a lot of action otherwise, broke his wrist in the Indiana game last Saturday. He's out for about a month. And of course, Jason Parker will not play at all all year. Gaines wildly off the glass. Nice job by Estel coming out on Gaines. So far, Gaines not able to get on track, and neither has Prince with the exception of that one long three-pointer. Kentucky's field goal troubles now have sunk to one for nine to start the game. It's Kid Carruth, number two, freshman. Can really fill it up, though, given the chance. Well, he's got Gaines on him. Remember, Gaines picked up those two fouls early. Now, Carruth ought to try to take advantage of that. Here, Here he is. Carruth, by three. Right on two. And remember what he did against Duke. He had 12 points all year coming into that game at 14 in the first half against Duke. Ended up with 19. But I think that's a tough matchup for Patino with Gaines on him. Hurt. Trying to answer. Long rebound, Bogans. I don't like the fact that Hurt takes shots coming down the court, not being a great shooter before anybody else gets involved. Offensive charge called on Bogans. Kentucky program that has won seven national championships. Patino led them to the 96 title. Tubby Smith won the last one, 1998, beating Utah down in San Antonio. Jim, I give you a stat that's really crazy about national championships. You know there are 12 active coaches who have now won a national crown. You'd never believe that many guys are active still in the game. Some with multiples, Mike Krzyzewski and Bobby Knight. Pretty good defense on that perimeter. O'Bannon. O'Bannon gets it back, rejected. Bogans comes out. Out lucky, looking for his first lead. Prince from the weak side with that play. Nice. Hawkins has a lot of confidence, Jim, and he dribbles that ball in traffic. Rick Pitino trying to figure out where he can get some points. And right now, they got to get Gaines off. He hadn't had a chance to do much, and there's Hurt again trying to do it by himself. Offensive. 
You see Hawkins not afraid to go in traffic. Excellent dip. Esco coming right down the court. None of the big men there to block him out because they were trying to stop Hawkins on the drive. And at the other end, Hurt called for the charge. Hurt limping off the floor right now. Looks like it's his hip or his ankle. Bryant Northern, number three, has come in to replace him. They've started three different point guards this season. Louisville, Northern's one of them. And they don't have anybody, Jim, that really, to me, is a natural at that position. Hurt, just the freshman, making some poor decisions, trying to take his athleticism over at Kentucky, and that'll get him in trouble. The third point guard they've started at Louisville is Alhaji Muhammad, the younger brother of Nazi Muhammad, the former Wildcat. Prince, baseliner for two. Daniels, turn around. Yes. Daniels keeps growing every time we see him. And there you saw him now, no longer just having to be a wing player. Can go inside with that added height. Northern. Ball banks at home. That ball had bad rotation. Obviously wasn't designed to be a bank shot and hit it anyway. Kind of like the one Gaines hit to start that great comeback against Tennessee. Gaines hit one of three in the final 36 seconds as they beat Tennessee by one. One of the real marquee wins of their nine victories so far. That breaks a seven-point Kentucky run. Trent steps to the basket and dumps it home. O'Bannon had no chance against Prince, who's got him by about four or five inches, and is very good with the ball. Patino. And Louisville call a timeout. The Cats were down early. Now I have the lead by three. From our game, presented by Knights of Columbus. Well, my hero in life is my dad, uh, Guffrey Smith Sr. He's in a uh, nursing home back in Lexington Park, Maryland. I, I just stopped in to watch, to go by and visit with him right after the Duke game. But he's a, and my mom as well. I can't just, I can't leave her out because they're both saints to, uh, to bear and raise 17 kids. They're certainly my hero and will always be. Wonderful heroes to have. And they raise themselves. One special one, guy right one there. One special guy is right. And when Patino came here to take over the program, the 89-90 season, Tubby was one of his assistants, was here for two years before he went off to make his own mark at Tulsa, a team he took to the Sweet 16. Georgia, another program he took to the Sweet 16, then on to Kentucky, where he won a championship. Nice double teaming, a change in defense. That time by Tubby Smith, out of the timeout. Good doubling up in the corner. But so often, guys, double up and go reaching for the ball, Jim, instead of just going ahead and using their body and their hands to keep them in a precarious position. The reach in caused the foul, took away a good defensive idea. Now on Peruth. A little zone right now by Kentucky. Northern just banked one home this time. Dips it down and out. Brown on the foul. Well, the Louisville players basically just throw the ball at the basket, Jim. One of the reasons that they have a such a poor shooting percentage as opposed to taking shots. Hawkins got caught underneath. Gaines takes off. He'll take it to the hole, and Gaines is on the board for the first time, their top scorer. I think Gaines is one of the best players in the United States. He's not really surrounded by the kind of offensive team that can showcase his talents. But he's got the outside shot. He can drive. He's got good size, handles the ball. Tough man to handle. Hawkins and Kentucky. Call the timeout. Be a 30 second timeout. Hey, Edge Gel is gonna clean up your act with Edge Clean Shave Gel. Edge Clean. Edge Clean's got a built in facial cleanser that helps lift dirt and oil every time you lather. To help lift dirt and oil every time you shave. Edge clean complete. So clean up your act with Edge Clean Shave Gel. That first Kentucky team under Patino has spawned some really good careers. Well, there's Billy Donovan outstanding right there. And here's a guy, Ralph Willard, 
And there's a story out that Ralph Willard and, and, and Rick were sitting on the porch, Derby Week, and a Cardinal, this was before he made the decision of where he would go to coach, and Rick said, I wonder where I should go to coach, and a Cardinal landed on his chair. I think that Ralph Willard will verify that, that story, because if it is, it's, it was very prophetic. An omen. I guarantee it. Herb Sendak in that uh, picture. Willard, by the way, the head coach now at Holy Cross. Sendak at uh, North Carolina State. Not a minute, Florida. Good breakout by Gaines. Gaines. Miles gets it back. Rejected by a fellow Compton, California player. Third time today the Prince has come from the weak side and blocked the shot, not on his man, but on someone else's. Timeout on the floor. Twelve eleven, Kentucky. After the new Chevy Trailblazer, everything else just seems kind of weak. The all-new 270 horsepower Chevy Trailblazer, like a rock. This is a message from America to the extraordinary men and women who are serving their nation during this holiday season. From the folks back home. We just want to send our love to you and thank you so much for all your help. As a veteran, I'd like to tell you I'm behind you 100%. What you're doing today makes us proud to be Americans. And thank you for protecting our country. America says thank you. If you're taking aspirin for your heart, there's important news about mixing medication you need to discuss with your doctor. It's been shown that ibuprofen, the pain reliever in Advil and Motrin, in some cases may interfere with the way aspirin works to protect your heart. Don't let another pain reliever interfere with aspirin's life-saving benefits. To relieve tough pain, take extra strength Bayer Aspirin. Nothing's proven stronger and more aspirin won't interfere. Bayer, take it for pain, take it for life. Aspirin is not appropriate for everyone, so be sure to talk to your doctor before you begin an aspirin regimen. Our special is today lamb chicken nut and samosa. I want a brisket. One of the great dishes we serve in the fall is a roasted squab with fall vegetables, and it's just great this time of year. The special today is pizza. We have a hanger steak, we have a grilled salmon, a grilled tuna. We have apple pie. <laughs> very, very low fat. He's <laughs> a comedian. And 2001 with some fun in the sun. Purdue battles Jason Gesser and Washington State in the Wells Fargo Sun Bowl. It'll be a scorcher Monday on CBS. The jersey hung here in Rupp Arena in uh, Rick Pitino's honor for what he did to turn the fortunes of the program around, but he really caught everyone off guard. He did, Jim. He came in this way. Hey, he was here for eight years. He knows where the visitors are supposed to come in, which would normally be coming from this direction. Yeah, from the other Everybody. end. Everybody. <laughs> and all the assistants had come out just minutes ahead, seconds ahead from the other end, so all eyes were fixated on the other entrance. So there was really not much of a reaction. Hey, this guy's not only one of the really great coaches of basketball, but he's also a guy that's pretty shrewd. And he, I think he, he outfoxed him. Yeah, he, he, he had that one figured out to the day he took the job. But he told you yesterday he really doesn't give a damn about this game coming from uh, uh, gone with the wind. But uh, yeah, he's been calculated. Beautiful pass inside by Kamara. Kamara makes it 14-11 Wildcats. And let's see if Louisville can get something other than just come down and make a throw with the basket. That was another one right there by the freshman, Bender. Brandon Bender, who just checked in, freshman from Louisville. Jim, Louisville scores 34% of their points off of the other team's turnovers. Today, Kentucky only has three turnovers, and Louisville really hadn't been able to get that part of their game going. But the reason this game is close Kentucky is a great rebounding team. Louisville not quite so, but it's 11 to 12 right now. Louisville's hanging right in there on the boards. Chuck Hayes has come in for the first time. Here he is with the ball. Press the ball. From California, drives to the basket for two. From Modesto, California. Mix up on assignments that time by Louisville defensively. That's the second time Fitch has grabbed a shirt. He got by with gains that time. 
Adam Childs almost came away with the steal. Gaines should have gone back door. He'd have had himself a layup. Push off called against Kentucky. Ooh, Tubby. All on Childs. Tubby could be looking for a technical right there. Childs, that's his first continuous third. Get in depth team reports, live scores, and stats when you've got to know more about college basketball. Just click on NCAA Hoops. At cbs.sportsline.com or on America Online under the keyword CBS Sports Line. Jim, that's the second time today Tubby got himself in a double team situation. Both times his players got called for the technical, I mean, for the uh, foul. And he wanted those referees to know that if we're going to double team, you can't call it that close. But he almost got a technical foul there. They want Tubby to get out of the way. He's not giving any room on that sideline for the inbound pass. losing control for a moment. He's got a smaller man on him now. Northern has to recognize that. Get the ball over to him. Louisville likes to play the way that Rick played at Kentucky in the latter years, but he had a lot more talent than obviously is on this Louisville team. I think Louisville players are going to have to be a little bit more cognizant of, of getting the ball to Reese Gaines so that he can get off offensively. That foul call on Fitch, Billy. He's had six 20-point games. They're not getting him the ball. Kentucky now in his own. Northern. Second three of the game. Kentucky much more effective against this Louisville team when they stay in a man-to-man, but on the out-of-bounds situations, they've been going to zone. It looks like Northern's about to be replaced, too, but he got another three to drop before the dead ball. And inside, Fitch with Kentucky. Big men did not get back. Patino very upset with that. Seema slow getting down court. Good pull out here. Gaines going over two men, trying to get Fitch away from him. Miles inside, and Hayes for the second time whistle. It's Chuck Hayes, Ball State High School football player in the state of California. First team as a sophomore, and then gave it up to play basketball. Adam Childs doing a lot of talking out there, Jim, for a man that's uh, not used to getting this kind of much playing time in the first half. Ellis Miles, like Tayshawn Prince from Compton, California, from different high schools. He shot 300 free throws yesterday. Ellis Miles trying to find some answers to 52% at the line on the season. Well, they ha they are a woeful free throw shooting team. 58%. One of the few times we've ever seen Jim in a practice, an opposing team work on on blocking out against foul shooting on the basis that let's face it they're going to miss 50 percent of their free throws and, and they Kentucky worked on that very diligently yesterday. Harris misses by miles on that. Childs. Huggins goes in. Hayes gets it rejected by miles. They say a tie up and the arrows belongs to Kentucky. Nice block by miles Picked up with that left hand nice and strong. Against Azu does have good power. Actually, it's Louisville ball. Look at that block right that? on the ball. Beautifully done. So they get Hayes for going up and down. Carlos Hurt, Billy, has come back into the lineup for Louisville. Comes back to get the ball, which was good in his part. Child should have been with him. Traveling. Brown didn't get set. This is an interesting Louisville team offensively. You know how Rick Pitino wants to play, and he told us yesterday, hey, I am going to coach my Louisville program like I did Kentucky. We're going to press, we're going to run, we're going to shoot and take the outside shots. But to be quite honest with you, this personnel doesn't fit very well for that offensively. Daniels outside. Just doesn't have the personnel that can make the shot. Right. Back to Kentucky Prince. Oh. Good a better look. Way up goes Bogus. 
and Fender comes away. He was battling his own teammate, Miles, for a moment. Well, you've heard many times, you know, coaches say, I don't want shooters, I want makers. And he's got shooters, but they aren't makers. O'Bannon, that one's blocked. And a chance. Releases early. Pitch got it to him. Knocked out of bounds by the Cardinals. Good hustle by Hurt getting back on defense. Seven different Wildcats in the scoring column. It's Kentucky 18-14, first half. Is your dandruff sending the wrong signals? Go! Go! No, no. Get Selsun Power. Doctors recommend Selsun Blue. Man, that is awesome. Get Selsun Power. This is a message from America to the extraordinary men and women who are serving their nation during this holiday season. From the folks back home. We want to thank all the service men and women for all they're doing for our country. God bless America. America says thank you. you can depend on the cars that last Chevy will be there I'm in that won't fill you up and never let you down. Right, yep. Yeah. Pliers. Make it a blood light. Some subpar field goal percentages. Jim Nance, Billy Packer back here in Lexington, Kentucky. And we were with the Kentucky team when the Patino announcement came March 21st. And Kentucky ended up losing it the very next day in the tournament right. to USC. Jim, I think you made a good point at that time last year in Philadelphia. You said to me, I think that this is going to take a little something off the Kentucky performance. And you were absolutely right. Not taking anything away from USC, but Kentucky was not the same team that day. Already, the people in the Commonwealth of Kentucky were starting to gear toward this. Well, you remember matchup. the memo letter that came out. It yeah. was anything but flattering for Rick Patino in terms of his decision and where he had decided to coach. Shocked a lot of people in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. So switching outside, Miles now on a guard. There's got to be a mismatch, and there it is. Prince has got it. He should have been ready for the shot. Prince waited too long. Eric Brown with the rebound. See, they had switching out front that time. Hurt ended up on Prince, and no opportunity whatsoever. Prince should have recognized, been ready to shoot upon the catch instead of taking so long. Allowed Louisville to readjust. With Gaines out of the Reese Gaines out of the game right now. Let's see where the shots are going to come from. Nate it off. Gets it to Bender. And the freshman banks it home. Now the player starting to get a little confidence here with the college game. Well, he really had his breakout game against Ohio State. The young man a lot thought of, and he's got himself in tremendous condition compared to his high school years. Fitz knocks down the three from the wing. Miles didn't get there in time. Bender looks like he's uh, winded a little bit right now. We saw him on that treadmill a little bit yesterday. Yeah. When you make a mistake in practice, you don't stand and watch. You go over and run. Whole row of treadmills that aren't even five feet off the floor from the court. And uh, we're going to see a notable sub, Luke Whitehead, come in for Louisville. Near the conclusion of this game, we will be selecting the Chevrolet most viable player of the game from each team. Chevrolet makes a contribution to each school's general scholarship fund, a tradition for over a quarter century. 
Well, this young man here, Luke Whitehead, had a rather dramatic, it's, it's scary to even look back at it, fall on a dunk attempt against Coppin State. He tried to play the next game against Ohio State, but then set out the next three games with some lingering shoulder problems. But I also think it had to have a lot to do with his psyche, too. Look well, back at the replay. He came back in a hurry with a great double team that forced that turnover. Here he is, Whitehead, short on that shot. Prince pulls it away. And again, one of the things that really helps Louisville is their great defensive press, but you can't press if you never score. So they're never in a position to take their greatest asset because of their weakness offensively. Whitehead out there on Hawkins. Hawkins should get that ball right back. There he is. Hawkins. And Bender. Louisville ball as they asked to touch the last. If anything, he just did get that finger in there. It was kind of a break, however, for Kentucky because Whitehead did a good job breaking off down, down the court. See the shot going up right here. Well, you know, that ball hit Bender after Estel touched it. Should have been Kentucky's ball. That's what about 20,000 sets of eyes saw here, too. Good Bender working hard inside, eating up Estel. Yeah, and fouled before the shot. Sixth team foul, one away from the one and one. Bender Ballard High School. Right in Louisville. Yep. Allen Houston's high school. He Bender's now the number two all-time scorer, so if he can do anything like Houston did, he'll be all right. The ball knocked out of the hands of Whitehead. Louisville ball. This has been, uh, granted, almost all the games have been at home, but a 9-1 and one start for Louisville with wins over Tennessee and Ohio State. They're coming off a 12-19 and 19 season a year ago. And no postseason tournament, obviously. Traveling. Louisville got knocked out first round of Conference USA tournament. A tough way for Denny Crum, who had such a fabulous 30 years at Louisville, to go out. Spectacular career, two championships. The team of the 80s under Denny. He's back home in the Louisville area on his farm watching this on television. Now, what we're seeing is some consistency in officiating. You notice that Kentucky double teamed and got two fouls called on them. Here we see Louisville in the double team, and the referees are calling it really tight on the double team reach ins. Foul on Whitehead there, Billy. You've got to recognize that as a player. Ellis Miles comes back for the Cardinals. Hawkins in traffic. Tipped up. That was Hawkins that kept it alive. And Fitz bangs it right off the Louisville player. Made off. Fitz, six foot four. Gets in the middle of everything. Remember his turnaround game, Jim? He had it up at Michigan State. He did such a great job rebounding against Tom Izzo's team that obviously is a great rebounding club themselves. Since that time, he's been a permanent fixture in that lineup. Estel wide open. Prince misses him. He's still open. Estel's a guy that puts up big numbers. You ought to give him touches. Fitch. Prince chases it down. Put on Nadenoff. That'll be a one and one. That Luke Whitehead fall, that tumble on the dunk attempt against Coppin State, this is it. If you haven't seen it, you won't believe it. Uh, Jim, I saw one like that in 1974 when David Thompson. Was it hit, that hit, bad? I remember yes, in the it, NCAA it, tournament against Pittsburgh. It, it was incredible and uh, had an opportunity to broadcast that game. David laid there motionless for a long time. And obviously the next week came back and led his team to the national championship, but it was an incredible fall. Nadenoff with the driving two. Talking to Patino to Rick yesterday about that fall for Whitehead. He instantly compared it to that very same Thompson tumble. Fitch fouled on the dunk attempt. Good job by Kentucky, really breaking to the open lanes. Fitch does have a nose for it. Second on Whitehead. But the basket does not go. 
Actually, by grabbing that rim, he probably jerked the ball right out of there. Yeah, he did. It might have gone in. Hits with the line. Two. A year ago, the game at Freedom Hall, Kentucky won by only two, 64-62. Two years back, it was a 30-point win here at Rupp. But we remember the one four years ago. It was the national championship team of Kentucky and Louisville shot them here, 79-76. We'll be right back. If you're concerned about hair loss, call Hair Club now and get this booklet or CD-ROM free. It's packed with the latest information on hair loss breakthroughs from around the world, including hair cloning and genetic therapy. It's loaded with the latest updates on all the proven hair loss options available today, including approved drugs, shampoos, and Hair Club's new procedures. So call 1-800-HAIR-CLUB now to get more information. Hair Club, over 25 years of hair loss experience available at your fingertips. Hey, Hallie Eisenberg, drinking a Pepsi. Actually, this isn't a Pepsi. It's new Pepsi Twist with lemon. And I'm not Hallie Eisenberg. <laughs> I'm Hallie Berry. Drinking Pepsi Twist. Well, it's not exactly Pepsi Twist. It's Diet Pepsi Twist. And I'm not exactly Hallie Berry. You know. <laughs> I'm Barry Bostwick. Who is Barry Bostwick? Like twists? Try new Pepsi Twist and regular and diet. A lemon twist on that great Pepsi taste. Hey, Edge Gel is gonna clean up your act with Edge Clean Shave Gel. Edge Clean. Edge Clean's got a built-in facial cleanser that helps lift dirt and oil every time you lather. To help lift dirt and oil every time you shave. Edge Clean Complete. So clean up your act with Edge Clean Shave Gel. This holiday season, you can play in the snow or the dirt because Honda's got great deals on all sport and utility ATVs, including any Foreman or Recon. Choose no down payment and low monthly payments for the first two years with a Honda card or get no down payment and low 6.9% fixed APR for 24 months with Honda Finance. And we've added bonus bucks for merchandise on select Honda ATVs. But hurry, gifts that go are going fast. Jim Nance with Billy Packer. Yesterday we were in Louisville to attend the Cardinal practice. We had a chance to talk to Rick Pitino about all the buildup with his return to Rupp. I have a totally different perspective uh, on basketball and entertainment and what it takes in light of everything that's happened emotionally in my life. So quite frankly, not to take us a, um, um, a line from uh, the movie uh, Gone with the Wind. Frankly, I don't give a damn. His perspective, uh, he referred to there, everything that's going on emotionally, the September 11th tragedies with the Twin Towers, his brother-in-law and best friend, Billy Minardi, worked for Kenner Fitzgerald, 104th floor, and was lost in those He also tragedies. lost his brother-in-law in, in a cab accident, and remember, of course, the tragedy, losing his own son back when he was a coach at Providence. So, the young age, he's been through a lot team here at Louisville you saw the patches on the left shoulder B in the middle for Billy who really was one of the ones who really influ influenced Rick to get back into the college game and specifically to go ahead and take the Louisville job and had counseled him in fact when he was at Kentucky to not leave to go to the Celtics. Well Rick admits now that he took that job for the wrong reason and uh, said this is where he will end his coaching career at Louisville. Basket by Bogan and a foul. Well, this all goes back to the pass that hurt me that was not handled by Miles on the inside. A breakdown by Louisville's having all kinds of problems scoring, Jim. Coming up on Singular at the half, Tim Brando will get you caught up on all the scores and highlights. That's all coming up on Singular at the half. Jim, you mentioned that game back in 97. That was December of 97. I think that's probably the biggest upset in this series that started back in 83. Uh, because in that game, Louisville actually came in with a losing record. And Kentucky, with that team, eventually won a national won the championship. championship. Right. So, you know, you got to figure that's about as good as it gets in terms of upsets. Bogan's becoming the eighth Kentucky player to score. Northern's got to see that Whitehead is open on the insides. 
Be strong with the shot off Miles. Well, they say Kentucky touched it last. When you take that much time to hit a man in the low post that's wide open, the other team has a chance to react. Northern had to recognize Whitehead was right there and could make a move. Whitehead bangs it home. Uh, this is a big boost to have him back playing. Averages 12 a game. Again, he had set out the last three. Had a 30-point game this year, so it shows that he does have explosive scoring ability. Hogan's quiet but patient so far in this game. Like the game in Indiana where he let it get to him a little bit. He's hooking. Outside, Whitehead, this will be his third. You hear Whitehead holler, he's hooking me. Californian to California. This on Whitehead, that's his third team 10. Was he hooking him? I didn't think so. I thought Prince did a pretty nice job in there. Tenth team foul, double bonus. Two shots for Prince. Whitehead's dad. Eddie played for Peck Hickman back 63 to 66. Very interesting story was the beginning of the integration in regard to Louisville basketball. His dad obviously part of it. Prince gets a three-point play out of it. Whitehead off and running. He is posting up strong inside. Count the basket. Really like what Whitehead is doing on the inside. He's posted up. He's getting excellent position. Taking it right to the basket. Basket interference. Count the basket. Sima. There he is. Joseph Sima, senior from Paris, France. Returns. Much, much like yesterday's practice where Reese Gaines didn't play much at all. Today he's down on the bench. Been down there for a long time. Kamar, nice catch. But Whitehead read the one coming back on the save. I like Whitehead's game. Well, he traveled, but Hall got the Swiss instead. He sure did walk. Looked like he wanted to pass and threw up a prayer. But you see now, being able to extend their defense with some scoring. On the wing, Bogans. Three at the other end. Big basket for Bogans. But then he lets down defensively, lets Whitehead go right by him. Whitehead, second chance. No, but the put back by Brown. Jim, that's a bad play by Bogans. He scores, and then he falls asleep. Allows his man to run right by, creates an opening for Louisville. And he's being explained that right now. A gritty performance by Louisville, down six. It's been said, men tend to communicate shoulder to shoulder. If that's the case, these guys are saying, let's change the world. Let's make a difference. Let's act as we are called. The Knights of Columbus, in service to one, in service to all. But Jim, we saw yesterday Kentucky working on blocking out the shooter. Now, what is the assignment right here is to get over and make sure the shooter, who's the most dangerous man, does not rebound. Watch, the shot goes off, Prince comes right around, and then eventually goes in and score. Bad block out. There he is, lays it up. He is the most dangerous man on the floor. You've got to get that shooter. Something that Kentucky worked on against Louisville yesterday, and obviously uh, a little uh, replay there for Kentucky to see just exactly how it's done. Notice how Prince brings the ball up the floor. He is really a gifted ball handler at his size. I think Whitehead's a better matchup. There's a double team and Whitehead picks up his fourth. Oh. Boy, that is a terrible break for Lloyd. It really is. He looked like he was going to be able to play a lot of minutes here today. Did you see what Rick Pitino did? He said, get your hands up and don't reach. Exactly what we talked about earlier in regard to double teams. If they're going to call the touch foul, you cannot reach. But that really hurts with Reese Gaines and Whitehead, the two best offensive producers that Louisville has. Both are going to be relegated to the bench. Whitehead. Miles coming in for him. To the bench with four. Hawkins gets the second of two. But you know, one positive note is that Whitehead, who had to sit out three games, looks like physically he was really ready to go in this one. That's a reach. Hawkins. 
It uh, looked like Whitehead, who's one of their premier players, when he's healthy, he could have gone really almost the whole way if he wasn't in foul trouble. Yeah, obviously, he looks like he's in great running shape. He really posted up well on the inside and was really the, the reason that Louisville made a nice comeback offensively. But he picked up a lot of cheap fouls there. One and one for freshman Larry O'Bannon from the city of Louisville. I think this kid's going to be a solid player for him. Fortunately, one of the free throw shooters in Louisville that shoots over 73%. As a team, I said they're only shooting 58%, but they've had good foul shooting defense, Jim. Their opponent's only shooting 61%. <laughs> that's I never have been able to figure that that's out. Stat you can't influence. It's right. just a mystery the way it works out. We're really guarding them well on the foul yeah. line. Work on your free throw percentage <laughs> defense. That may be best in the country. Nice rub off. Fitch plus one. O'Bannon taught a little lesson there about defensive positioning. Fitch really took advantage of him. Came rubbing right off. Good solid screen on the outside. Nice offensive set by Kentucky. Fitch has nine. Double digits. And the lead is eight with a minute 15 to go in the half. Does Fitch get you a quiet 10? Very much so. When the game is over, you look at his stats. And look at this. And there it there is. It. He makes great decisions. He's a very intelligent young player. Hawkins, three short. Miles muscles it away. You see why he's the fifth leading rebounder in the nation. He's got good, strong hands. He had a 23 rebound game earlier this year. Yes. Tied Kenyon Martin for the all-time high in Conference USA. That was against Tennessee State. That's the best single rebounding performance in the nation by player so far this season. 23 boards by that man, Miles. Dropped about 20 or 30 pounds, got himself in great physical condition. Yes. He's one of the trademarks of Rick Pitino's teams all time. Three rebounds to this point. 35 seconds. Eric Brown bangs it home. By Brown. Well, Brown hit a nice jumper before. Comes in with a little throw from the foul line. And Louisville hangs in there. Kentucky can take the last shot near steal by O'Bannon. Hawkins creates. Pokins from the wing. Dips down and out. And on the break, Gordon. Give it up to Brown for two more. Beautiful pass by Northern because I think Fitch would have blocked that. Hawkins with five in the lane, rejected by Sima. Northern has it. He'll launch it midcourt. Look out. Hits the glass. They will compete, will Louisville. Their largest deficit was nine. They bring it back to four at the half. That's the end of the first half with the score. Kentucky 36, Louisville 32. Tim Brando will be along with Singular at the half. After this message, and a word from your local station. AOL keeps me closer to the people I love. Everyone I know is on AOL. I have a best friend that lives in Denver. With AOL, I talk to her every day. We send pictures of our kids to their grandparents. Oh, my grandpa loves AOL. He's on all the time. Opening emails like Christmas. You know, you just never know what's coming. Definitely keeps me connected to family and friends. I mean, I'm even on my grandma's buddy list. Am I on your buddy list? Yeah. Oh, good. America Online, so easy to use, no wonder it's number one. Call 1-800-4-ONLINE. Hey, sports fans. For all of your news, scores, expert analysis, and fantasy advice, go to cbs.sportsline.com or AOL keyword CBS Sportsline. Joe Mantegna, James Garner, first Monday, a new series premiering January 15th. Over the river and through the woods. Still have family waiting to see you this holiday? Well, before you see them, see us, your Jeep dealer, for a special Home for the Holidays package. Featuring seven-year, 100,000-mile powertrain protection on Jeep Liberty. Protection neither Honda nor Toyota give you. Plus, get a two-wheel drive Liberty starting around 17 grand. So see your Jeep dealer today. And don't keep the family waiting. Hurry. Offer ends December 31st. Monday on 42 Daily News at 5.
Before you start ringing in the new year, we've got some safety tips you should know. Plus, that morning cup of coffee may be affecting your brain. Don't miss our Medical Minute. Be sure to watch 42 Daily News Monday at 5. It's the biggest event of the year. Mazer's after Christmas sale at our furniture and appliance store on Greensprings Highway Homewood. Not only get the best prices of the year, but you can buy with 12 months no interest through December 30th. Be sure to see the big ad in the newspaper Christmas Day for Alabama's largest selection of brand name furniture and a huge selection of GE appliances at wholesale cost or less. That's only at Mazer where you always buy for less. And your satisfaction is guaranteed. Experience all the excitement as the IMAX Dome Theater in the Queen Center presents Shackleton's Adventure. I'm 42 Daily News Chief Meteorologist Bonnie McLaughlin at the McWayne Center in downtown Birmingham, where the adventure is Yay! just beginning! Yay! Paul Feinbaum, only on 42 Daily News. It's about time. CBA Sports presents Singular at the Half. Sponsored by Singular, the wireless company dedicated to helping you express yourself. Hi again, everybody. I'm Tim Brando. Welcome back to Singular at the Half. Let's get you caught up on today's early college basketball action. You know, DePaul has really struggled at the United Center overall 5-11. and 11. Today against Missouri, they start out early looking good. Wesley Stokes with a nice drive and draw and dish to Arthur Johnson. Then Amari Sawyer had a big day. It's the tray here. That was their largest lead of the game. Best hair in college coaching, Quinn Snyder's. DePaul forward, Quimot Greer now will take the pass from Amari Sawyer. Slam it down. It's a nine-point game late. And then Andre Brown, who had nine boards on the day, crashing the glass on the offensive boards to make a difference. And Pat Kennedy gets his seventh win of the season. And Missouri, after winning nine in a row, has dropped three straight. Elsewhere, Marquette taking on Wake Forest. Skip Prosser making a difference for this ACC team. Watch his guard, Broderick Hicks, who will use the old head fake. A little head pump once and twice and a little kiss. And using the glass, he makes it count. Wayne Wade would answer with a reverse layup to tie the game at 57. And Josh Howard is an outstanding guard. He knows how to drive, and he's got outstanding height. Here he finds Antoine Scott for the slam. Now, Marquette attempting late. Travis Diener would take this one, but it goes over the window pane. And with 3.5 left, the game ends at 64-59 as they added two more. Northern Iowa and Iowa State, 88-69 the final in this game. Iowa State leads the series now, 31-6 on the fast break. Tyrae Pearson finds his way to the basket for the easy layup. The Northern Iowa guard, Robbie Sieverding, squares his shoulders, knocks down the tray, exchanging three-pointers. They're on an 8-0 run. They just won't stay down, this Northern Iowa team. Eric Smith bangs in a three, ties the game at 63. But Jake Sullivan, nice rotation off a tough angle three-pointer, and they go on to win it, 88-69 to the Cyclones. They're now 7-6. and six. Quinnipiac taking on St. John's. Both have had to, to change some nicknames, to be politically correct. St. John's now the Red Storm, of course, and Anthony Glover knocks down the three from the corner. And also Marcus Hatton, who had a big day, 22 feeding center. Abe Kata underneath for the lay-in. St. John's on a roll would not look back. Hatton again buries the three from the top of the arch, and the Red Storm extend their lead to 52 to 16. Outstanding work on the break. It was just easy pickings all day long for the Red Storm as they win at 97 to 60. UNC Greensboro, coached by Fran McCaffrey, going in to take on the Buckeyes of Jimmy O'Brien today. Courtney Eldridge will steal the ball and make an open court layup. Cutting into that Ohio State lead, it was just 27-26, but the Buckeyes, Sean Connolly, would drive down the middle for a layup, extending the Bucks' lead to 36-29. Brent Darby is going to be an influential player this year, and he must stick the three in order for the Buckeyes to be a factor. And Boban Sabovich receives the pass inside toughness. That's what they're going to need more of this year in the Big Ten to be effective. 85-54, they're now 8-2. Tennessee and Wisconsin, interesting matchup between the Big Ten and the SEC today. Uh, Wisconsin guard Travin Davis finds himself alone in the corner as he knocks down the three. Now watch Tennessee as they're looking to get involved in the ball game. Davis again had other plans with a steal and a hoop. Tennessee comes out in the second half on fire. Very athletic player Vincent Yarbrough to Marcus Haslip on the slam. But Wisconsin guard Delvin Harris would be the difference late in the game again with penetration. Finding his man going up for the hoop. And it's 65-62 Wisconsin leading it and winning it by three. A reminder, tomorrow we'll have the NFL on CBS double interaction in game one. Most of you will see Indianapolis take on Kurt Warner and the St. Louis Rams, while the late game will feature the AFC West Division champion Oakland Raiders against the Denver Broncos. And it all begins at noon Eastern with Jim Nance and his crew on the NFL today.
Singular at the half continues right after this. Hello? What could be as easy as paying with SpeedPass at mobile? Paying with SpeedPass at Exxon. To get your free SpeedPass, call now or go to SpeedPass.com. Exxon, we're drivers too. You'll like all the things you can buy with SpeedPass. But if it's lost or stolen, you'll also like knowing you won't have to pay for any unauthorized purchases. Security is guaranteed. Call now for your free SpeedPass. Exxon, we're drivers too. Daring to teach. Daring to heal. Daring to create. Daring to discover. Daring to serve. Daring to lead. The University of Louisville. Dare to be great. 136 years ago, it was a dream to create an institution in Kentucky that one day would be equal to anything on this continent. Today, the University of Kentucky is continuing to follow the dreams of its founders. Our alumni include Nobel and Pulitzer Prize winners, along with leaders in business, pharmacy, medicine, and the arts. Our students study alongside outstanding faculty, with many of our programs ranked among the very best in the nation. We are proud to be the University of Kentucky. Hello everyone, I'm Tim Brando and welcome to Singular at the Half. After 20 minutes of play at Rupp Arena, it's Kentucky leading Louisville 36 to 32. While obviously in other basketball action, we've got plenty to tell you about. Georgetown taking on UCLA today, 55 to 35 the score in that matchup. And obviously a very big day to say the very least for Dan Gadzurik, who's been a difference maker throughout the course of this game. And obviously there's no question that as he goes, so go the Bruins. Matt Barnes also a factor in the game. Gadzurik hitting baby turnarounds and uh, without question the job done inside by both Barnes and Gadzurik has been magnificent as they have roared to a 20 point lead 29 to 8 the run in this game uh, in the first half and it's 55 35 Duke 69 53 over San Diego State 11 43 remaining in the second half of this game remember they had an 11 day layoff to Duke after that win over Kentucky but they are playing well still unbeaten and still number one Purdue and Robert Morris 87 to 53 the score in that game and uh, rolling along at eight and six now are the Boilermakers with that roll away victory Mississippi State taking on Tulane 77 to 66 is the score this is the fourth time now that Mississippi State has won in this series and they're up by 11. Texas and Utah and in this game it's 44 to 38 the Utes with the lead Owens is out of the game as is Chris Burgess in this particular matchup Arkansas taking on Elon today and the Razorbacks again just a, a blitzkrieg and turnovers a three to one difference was the difference in the game 96 to 52 in that matchup IUPI taking on Georgia Tech the day the lights went out in Georgia again courtesy Brian Buchanan Nailing the first of four three-pointers. I'm at 7-5 Tech. Here he hits his second one. Here he hits his second one. You see what happens there. Then he hits a third one coming up. And uh, now suddenly he hits his fourth and the lights go out. Coaches say, well, it's a 29-minute delay. What do we do? Well, you go back to Buchanan if you're IUPI. And he just continued to hammer them home. And Coach Hunter is a happy camper. Why not? The final score, 98-92 IUPI with the victory. Well, and some college football news today involving Georgia Tech. The Yellow Jackets announced the hiring of Miami Dolphins offensive coordinator Chan Gailey as their next head coach. Gailey, also a former head coach of the Dallas Cowboys, received a five-year guaranteed contract that will pay him $900,000 this season with bonuses that could raise his salary to more than $1.2 million annually. Speaking of bowls, the 
Motor City Bowl taking place in Detroit today. The MAC against Conference USA and Tavares Bolden uh, rolling out, taking matters into his own hands. As you see him roll for the touchdown, 28 yards. That would tie the game and then Chester Taylor goes to work. 24 yards right up the gut to make it a 23-16 game. And then in their last offensive opportunity, Gino Goduli, highly heralded freshman, throws it into the end zone, and Ray Jackson just can't hang on. And the final 23-16, well, the MAC now is 2-0 in bowls, and Conference USA is 0-3. Elsewhere, at the Alamo Bowl, it's Iowa now leading Texas Tech at the break. It's now 10-3. Butts was out of that game, and Graving, who came in for him, has the only touchdown. Well, a reminder, Monday at 2 Eastern time, CBS Sports rolls into the bowl season as the 13th-ranked Washington State Cougars take on the Purdue Boilermakers in the Wells Fargo Sun Bowl. Al Singular Wireless celebrates the self-expression of college basketball fans everywhere as Kentucky shows off their version of the Blue Man Group. For more, go to cbs.sportsline.com. America Online users simply enter the keyword CBS Sportsline. Love that camera angle. Thanks for watching Singular at the Half. We'll send you back courtside right after this. Enjoy the second half here on CBS. CBS Sports presents Singular at the Half. Sponsored by Singular, the wireless company dedicated to helping you express yourself. I don't immobile while Puma Alvento, Muta da Cento, E Defensiero. Singular wireless nationwide plans. No roaming or long distance charges, plus 3,000 night and weekend bonus minutes. Muta da Cento, Southeastern Conference. SEC Basketball, the standard of excellence. Catch every game of the first three rounds in their entirety with Mega March Madness as DirecTV supplements CBS's coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship. CBS congratulates CSI, Golden Globe nominee for Best Drama. Up to 4,000 cash back. Financing starts at zero APR. Yes. 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 Ron Newton Pontiac Cadillac GMC says turn them loose. New Sonomas take 1,500 cash back or zero APR. Half ton Sierras get financing as low as zero APR. Full size Yukons get zero APR. Turn them loose. Up to 4,000 in rebate. Financing starts at zero APR. Plus, find North Alabama's best selection of new Pontiacs and Cadillacs. Yes. 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 Wider selection. Bigger discount. Lower financing. Turn them loose. Ron Newton Pontiac Cadillac GMC. 42 Daily News brings you more, more in-depth, detailed local news coverage than any other station. How do we do it? It's about time and how we use it in our newscasts. First, we move from one story to another without a lot of talk in between. We get straight to the point with the important information you need. That means more time for what's important to you. 42 Daily News, don't you think it's about time you watch? Ben Smith, only on 42 Daily News. It's about time. CBS Sports coverage of the Road to the Final Four is sponsored by Pontiac. What would you do with some Pontiac excitement? The Big Cheese only at Sonic, America's driver. And by new Pepsi Twist. Pepsi and Diet Pepsi with a twist of lemon. Kentucky leads Louisville 36-32, about to begin the second half here at Rupp Arena in Lexington. How about that first half, Billy? What did you think? Well, very unusual in the respect that Louisville was able to stay in this game, Jim, despite the fact they haven't been able to score consistently and consequently couldn't get in their press. When they got into their press, lo and behold, who was the guy that broke it? Tayshawn Prince, you'll see right here, a prince of a pass. Louisville has a hard time coming back to trap. Nadenhoff gets himself in bad position. And watch what Kentucky does breaking long. Prince, with his size, goes right over the top of the press. Good hit to the inside. Bogans puts it in. There was a special ceremony here, Billy, before the game. 
They renamed the floor here, the court here, Kaywood's Court, in honor of Kaywood Ledford, who for 39 years was the voice of the Wildcats. He passed away this past September. Kaywood Ledford, truly a legend here in the Bluegrass State. One of the real gentlemen in the history of, uh, of the sport. Always great. You should come to these ball games, see him sitting down in the down in the end, getting that little cigarette in maybe, and come out and broadcast the games. And really a legendary figure here. Revered by all. Great man to man again. Seema, good shot blocker. And a foul in the that, paint. Is that Gaines? Is that Reese Gaines' is that fourth? Gaines fears it. It is. It's his, it's his third. It's his third. third, between, his third. between Gaines and Whitehead, of their fouls today, they've been touch fouls. Here we see these shooting percentages. And the key thing that jumps out at you, Louisville's only taken five threes, Kentucky 16. So kind of a reversal of traits right there. Bogans has to scramble for it. And taken away by the Cardinals. Here's Gaines. Is he going to try to go a one on two? Well, gives it out to Hurt. Here's the three. Try. The Cardinals are within one. That was a good decision by Reese Gaines not to go against two. Bogans drives for the bucket. Reese Gaines held to only two points in that first half. Billy, he made. One of three attempts, that's all he could get open for. Saddled with two fouls quickly in this game, and now he's picked up his third. And Fitch right back on him as he was in that first half, taking away easy opportunities. He's looking for the solid screen out high, gets it. See, the problem with the screen and roll when you got a guy like Seema, he is not going to hit the long jumper. That time, Prince let him have the jumper that the coaches said let him take, but that one was about 15 feet. Seema hits it. Four points for the game. Nice pass by Hawkins. Bogans wasn't ready to take it. Luba really has their defense packed inside right now. Prince with gains on him. Prince on the follow. He has ten for the night. Jim, you know what made that Fitch? Smart enough to recognize Gaines has got three fouls on him. He's being posted up by Prince inside, so he was patient enough to wait till his teammate got open. He is a clever player. There's Gaines. Tough shot. Long board to Bogans. Oh, Prince again. Gaines made the same mistake that Bogans did earlier in the ball game, and that was let the man break long that was guarding him. Didn't get back on defense, made the pass rather easy. And Patino's already pulled two players off the bench. They'll check in. Nidmoff and O'Bannon on the next whistle. Gaines, what did he